ESPN welcomes you back to spring training. Another beautiful day in Port St. Lucie, Florida. One last chance for these Mets fans to work on their tans, catch some rays, get one last autograph or two. It's the final home game of the spring for the Mets here at Tradition Field as they take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Steve Phillips. We'll be joined shortly by Duke Castiglione. Delighted to have you with us. Certainly hopes are high for both of these teams for the upcoming season. In the case of the New York Mets, 83 wins last year, above 500, but now they're thinking about ending the Atlanta Braves' 14-year stranglehold on the National League East, and a guy who's going to pitch today could be the key. Well, the ace of the staff, Pedro Martinez on the mound today. When he pitches, it's an event, whether it's spring training or the regular season. The Mets are counting on a big season from Pedro. He's been slowed up this spring by a sore toe, but now he's getting ready. He's going to pitch game three in the regular season. He's looking for a second time out to get a little bit sharper, a little bit stronger, because if the Mets are going to win this year, they need a healthy Pedro Martinez to make at least 30 starts. And he'll be facing a Cardinals lineup that will likely closely resemble their opening day lineup in Philadelphia on Monday led by the reigning National League MVP, Albert Pujols. Well, and it wasn't just a one-year wonder. In his five years, he's never finished lower than fourth in the MVP balloting. This guy can do it with the bat, and he's improved his defense as well at first base. A great base runner. He is the heart and soul of this St. Louis Cardinal team. They've won 100 games in consecutive years. They're going to try to do it again. They're going to need Albert Pujols to have another MVP-type MVP season. And the Cardinals will have the left-hander Mark Mulder on the mound this afternoon against the Mets. Pedro Martinez against the St. Louis Cardinals will have the first pitch here. We'll check in with Duke Castiglione right after this. Another beautiful day here on the east coast of Florida. Cardinals and the Mets here in Port St. Lucie. And let's welcome in Duke Castiglione. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Well, as we all know, Pedro Martinez has been bothered by a big right toe all spring long. And one of the reasons he's been bothered by that toe is because he pushes off the mound so hard. And not only does he push off the mound hard, a lot of times on his follow through, he will uh, actually hit that toe again. So the Mets move the cleat under his right big toe about an inch and a half back from where it normally is. And they also put silicone gel pads underneath and on the side and on top of where that big toe sits inside his shoe. Well, I'll tell you, if you ever need any proof about a pitcher's arm strength coming from his feet, Pedro Martinez is the proof. Five foot 11, kind of a frail little guy throwing 95 miles per hour. It's because of the torque that comes off of the rubber on the mound. I tell you what, this guy can do it, but they're going to have to guard against that toe all season long. The work on that shoe has made it a bit more stiff, which they hope will help him as well. Here's the St. Louis lineup, and as we said, it will closely resemble what they'll open with on Monday in Philadelphia. David Eckstein to lead off and play shortstop. Newcomer Juan Encarnacion in right field. Albert Pujols at first base. Jim Edmonds in center field. Scott Rowland batting fifth and playing third base. And John Rodriguez in left field, Yadier Molina catching Aaron Miles at second base, and Mark Mulder will pitch against Pedro Martinez. Well, he made 31 starts last year. He missed a little bit of time with some shoulder problems. Opponent's batting average, 204. He's tough to hit. He throws a lot of strikes, good velocity on the fastball, outstanding changeup, does a lot to keep hitters off balance. Schedule to start their third game of the regular season behind a bit because of the toe problems that have limited just three innings in a regular spring training game. That was Sunday against the Orioles. Well, the Orioles thought Pedro was having a little fun at their expense. It didn't look like there's anything wrong with his toe the way he pitched against us. Uh, Kevin Millar, who played with him in Boston, said Pedro looked like he was in midseason form, and for the first time out, he was very sharp. David Eckstein took a ball up and in. A 294 average last year, a career high for Eckstein. Slapped on the right side, a diving stop by Anderson Hernandez. Nice play as he throws on to Carlos Delgado for the out. Well, outstanding play right there, Anderson Hernandez has pretty much won the second base job here for the Mets and he's done it because he has phenomenal range going to his left and his right. We see it right there and he comes up and rifles. When Carlos Delgado is going to tell him, take a little bit off that kid, calm down. Nice play. Gets to his feet, makes a nice throw. As Matsui injured, will open the season on the disabled list. That 
opens the door for Hernandez. And many believe even when Matsui comes back, it doesn't necessarily mean he'll take back the second base position. Juan Encarnacion is the batter last year with the Marlins. Posted what are pretty typical numbers for Juan. Well, you're right on Anderson Hernandez. I mean, there's a lot of talk. They got him in a trade from the Detroit Tigers last year, just before the season. He's blossomed in the Mets uniform. Outstanding defensive player. His strength is defense. The, the question how much offense you're going to get from him. But with the improvements to the lineup, they think they'll be able to carry a guy who can play some leather. They need good defense because of Carlos Delgado's lack of range at first. Popped out of the play to the right. One and two on Encarnacion. He'll take over this year in right field with the retirement of Larry Walker. Both corner outfield positions will be different. Reggie Sanders is also departed by a free agency, grounded to short and booted by Jose Reyes. So an error on the shortstop, and the Cardinals have a one-out base runner here in the top of the first. Well, Encarnacion hits the ball off the end of the bat, and Reyes gets over and gets in front a little bit, and just kind of lifts his head a little bit too early, loses sight of the ball, doesn't get a grip, and Encarnacion on with an error. 18 errors a year ago for Reyes, but of course he also makes a lot of spectacular plays that a lot of other shortstops wouldn't make. Well, great range. I mean, that's the thing is he's going to get to more balls. And so 18 errors is a little bit more than you want, but he can get to some balls. Now Albert Pujols off the MVP season of a year ago. Steve mentioned in every year of his career, he's finished in the top five in MVP balloting. Look out. Time called by Adam Dowdy, the home plate umpire. Interesting, even in spring training, there's some gamesmanship. Pedro likes to get the ball, get on the mound, and come at you quickly sometimes. Sometimes quick pitching you. Albert Pujols asks for time, and he gets it. Pitch outside corner for a strike. And Pujols behind in the count, 0-2. Well, one of the things that's always been an issue with Pedro Martinez is his velocity. At times during the season, he'll throw 93, and then other times he's 86, 87. In the air along the right field line, and into foul ground goes Carlos Delgado to make the catch. It is a breezy afternoon here. Wind blowing across the field from right to left and slightly in in a pretty big ballpark. 338 down the lines and 410 to straightaway center. Well, that pop-up drifted in foul territory. You see Carlos Delgado looking at Anderson Hernandez saying, hey, kid, you got to make that play. That's the second baseman's ball. That's a tough play for the first baseman to go back and make the catch over his shoulder. The second baseman has a much better angle on it. Hernandez moved and kind of backed off deferring to the veteran. Two outs, a runner at first, and the batter, Jim Edmonds, hitting cleanup today, and that's likely where he'll be for much of the year. There's some talk that when the opposing team starts a left-handed pitcher, he'll hit fifth. Flip-flop with Scott Rowland, who's right behind him in the lineup today. Edmonds is battling a little inflammation in the nerve in his right elbow. He's numbness in, the, in his right forearm. Not really sure how it happens. I think sometimes when he swings, he can really hyperextend that arm, the front arm, and swing the bat around. And sometimes that can pinch the nerve a little bit. But he says he's playable. I told him he can't hurt himself anymore by playing with it. His top spin line drive is caught by Hernandez to end the inning. After a half inning, the Cardinals nothing and the Mets coming up. Well, Steve, you mentioned Carlos Delgado talking with Anderson Hernandez about that pop-up, and he certainly got some instruction when he arrived at the dugout as well. Well, good young second baseman. He's got some mentoring going on on the field there. Sandy Alomar Sr., Willie Randolph, two pretty good second basemen to be able to talk to a young guy. And we saw a great diving play, and we also saw him, he should have gone after a pop-up, so that's what you're going to get with some young players. And Willie Randolph's lineup today. Reyes leading off, then Paul LaDuca, the catcher. Beltron in center, Delgado at first, right batting fifth and playing third. Cliff Floyd in left, 
Xavier Nady and right Anderson Hernandez will hit in front of Pedro Martinez against the 28 year old lefty Mark Mulder. Scheduled to start the second game of the regular season for the Cardinals on Wednesday in Philadelphia. Chris Carpenter, the reigning Cy Young Award winner in the National League, will work on opening day Monday. 16-game winner a year ago, Mark Mulder. Well, this lefty, he's the other ace on this staff. Great cutter. He's a ground ball pitcher. Pulled down the line, a fair ball. Off the bat of Jose Reyes all the way down to the left field corner. Played back in by John Rodriguez, and it's a double for Jose Reyes. Now, good hit piece of hitting by Reyes, ball down and in, and this is the same way Mulder's last start went. He gave up five runs in the first inning. Just nine ground ball base hits and just saw their way through the infield. A double down the line last time, and now again here today. And That's Mark Mulder's game. He gets ground balls, and more often than not, with the defense the Cardinals have put behind him, they can make the plays. Now Paul LaDuca. Talked about the Cardinals. One of the questions, who would bat second? Tony La Russa used the expression he likes damage from that number two spot. A guy like Larry Walker could give you some power. Mets have been wondering who would hit second. LaDuke has been there a lot this spring, but there's been some sentiment in the organization. Maybe Beltran could move up and hit behind Reyes. Well, it has been a point of contention. Willie Randolph has not locked in yet. He's, he's kind of keeping his options open. They like LaDuke batting second because he, he can take some pitches, gives Ho Jose Reyes a chance to steal a base. They don't want Carlos Beltran taking pitches. If he gets something to hit, they want him to swing, and that's why they like LaDuke a little better in the two-hole. The right side trying to move that runner along. Fouled it off. See LaDuca trying to punch that ball to the right side, trying to advance Reyes to third base and looking for a pitch that he can just get a ground ball and get him to third and put Reyes in scoring position with less than two outs. In the hole, 0 and 2. Breaking ball in the dirt. Blocked by Molina. Outfield around toward right for LaDuke and shallow, particularly Edmonds in center, who typically plays a very shallow center field. <laughs> Breeze blowing in. 81 degrees. Boy, the weather has been terrific throughout spring training here in Florida. These teams have no excuses about a lack of work because the weather didn't cooperate. The middle and a base hit. Reyes coming around to the plate, and Edmonds will throw it into second base, and the Mets lead one to nothing. Well, I guess Willie Randolph knows what he's doing, putting Laduca in the two hole in the lineup. I mean, why would anybody question that? And uh, Mulder gets the ball up in the zone a little bit here. And Laduca, again, keeping within himself, not trying to do too much, thinking up the middle to right field, just punches it up the middle, and there's no chance you're going to throw out. Jose Reyes from second base on a base hit. Edmonds, one of the better guys uh, in the outfield to be able to make a throw to the plate, but good piece of hitting, good base running. That's up, one nothing. The Duke has had a very good spring. 11th RBI of the spring. Went up to the plate hitting 342. Called strike on Carlos Beltran. Hoping for better numbers in his second year with the Mets. So much hype after he signed the seven-year contract. $119 million. And some injuries as well. There's another one of those ground balls given up by Mulder that finds its way down the line. Loduka in the third. He'll be held there. And it's a double for Beltron. Three straight hits to open the ball game. And as you said, Steve, here we go again for Mark Mulder. Well, a lot of times with control-type pitchers and guys with cutters, they have to get the feel for it, and sometimes they can't get it in far enough across the uh, inside part of the plate. You see John Rodriguez out there. He's been battling a sore shoulder all spring long, and it looks like he went into the corner to pick up that ball, and I'm going to go out and check him. That shoulder is, again, he's grabbing onto that shoulder. And you see it down there as he goes to the corner. He's going to have to spin. Oh, boy. Try to make a throw. And 
stumbled awkwardly as he bent over to pick up the ball and then went to brace himself against that side fence. They have a question about left field to start the year. They acquired Larry Bigby, but he's had a stress fracture in his foot and is out for at least a couple of weeks, so that has opened the door for Rodriguez and so Taguchi. Well, Rodriguez has been battling to try to make the team, and the reality is he's been playing with a sore shoulder all spring long. It affected his swing early on, and he probably shouldn't be playing. But he knows that if he doesn't, he doesn't make the Major League roster. So you see a lot of young guys who don't have much experience fighting to make the club. They're willing to play with more than just a, a normal ache or pain. Tony LaRusso out there. Getting ready to begin his 11th season as Cardinals manager is 28 at the major league level at age 61 third all time in wins now behind only the legendary Connie Mack and John McGraw. What a career for Tony La Russa. I know he'd like to have more World Series championships under his belt overall but I think when the time comes he's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for the success that he's had managing. Trying to win his first world championship with the Cardinals. And Rodriguez is going to come off the field. We talk about records in sports that'll never be broken. I like Connie Mack's chances of <laughs> yeah. staying number one. Well, you know, I think there's something to it. When you wear a suit in the dugout, it's just you the longevity's there for you. And guys, I think that, you know, you look like the guy in charge when you're wearing a suit. I think they play a little harder for you. 2,214 wins for La Russa. Talking with Tony in his office before the game today, he likes his team. Obviously, a number of changes over a year ago, and they do have some question marks, but he thinks there are many more positives than negatives, and it really begins for them with an outstanding starting pitching rotation. Well, there's no question. With Chris Carpenter, the ace of that staff, last year's Cy Young Award winner, and Mark Mulder really the, the number two punch in that one-two punch. They're not too worried about him. He's getting ground balls. They know they're going to make plays as he hits his spots a little bit better. He's just going to get his work in this afternoon, get ready for the season to start. Chris Carpenter picked up here in the spring right where he left off last season. He's had a terrific spring. Skip Schumacher has come in to play left field. There's Carlos Delgado getting ready to begin his first year with the Mets and last year with Florida. As the Mets tried to get him to come there as a free agent a couple of years ago. He thought long and hard about New York, decided instead to go to Florida. Where he had a very good year. Of course, they parted with every expensive commodity they had. Two men in scoring position for Carlos. One run already in, three straight hits. Check swing on a breaking ball. It's a strike, says Casey Mosher, the third base umpire. Well, this is exactly the kind of situation the Mets saw, got Carlos Delgado from the Marlins. They struggled offensively at first base last year, the worst in baseball in just about every offensive category. And they needed that aircraft carrier. They needed that number four hitter, and they have found it. Two balls and two strikes now on Delgado. They'll be followed by David Wright here in the bottom of the first. These two teams familiar with each other. They're neighbors here in Florida. Hit hard on the ground to shortstop. Eckstein comes to the plate. They have Leduca in the rundown. Molina bobbled the ball for a moment. And now Leduca called out as he runs out of the baseline with Albert Pujols in hot pursuit. Leduca stayed in the rundown long enough for both runners to wind up in scoring position. Beltran's at third, and Delgado made his way to second. A nice play by David Eckstein right here, playing in a little bit because you're hold, holding tight. Nice play, cutting down the run at the plate. Molina juggled the ball as he was trying to get his release, but good run down, and, and everybody in both dugouts yelling, don't get hurt, because right now, you don't want any of your regulars, any of your star players going down. 
You want them to stay healthy and be prepared to play the season. Here's David Wright. Impressive totals last year, and the expectation is he'll be even better with a year of experience under his belt. One and all the count on the right. Every publication you pick up this spring talks not only about what a talent right is, but what a good guy he is as well. And he is a hit. Top spin line drive that fell in front of Schumacher. A good piece of hitting by David Wright. He has the ability to cover the whole plate. Not many hitters can do it. The good ones can. They can take balls in the outer part of the plate, and punch in the right field. They can pull the ball down the line. And RBI situations, they elevate their game. And that's what David Wright, this kid, is going to be a star for a long, long time. He's, he's on the face and cover of a lot of magazines headed into preseason this year. And a lot of people expect uh, big numbers from him. All you hear about is what a terrific guy he is. And then you come here and talk to the folks around the Mets every day, and you don't find any dissenting opinion. If anything that seems they're concerned, he might be too nice, too accommodating to everybody, fans, media. That'd be a good problem to have. Oh, no. For Floyd, the batter, he and Wright have actually become good pals. Wright spent a lot of last year carrying Floyd's bags around. <laughs> On Wright's rookie year, Joe McEwing, the versatile utility man, but the real pro, was the mentor to David Wright as he broke into the major leagues. And he's following some of the good guys. A little lob in shallow left, and Schumacher spun off it, did well to backhand it. The runners had to hesitate to see if the ball would be caught. Beltron in to make it two to nothing. Five hits in the inning. You said it right off the bat, Steve. The last time out from Alder, a lot of ground ball hits, and today some ground ball hits, and now a couple little bloop hits. Well, the Mets aren't ripping him, but against Mark Mulder, this has to be your approach. You can't try to do too much. He does pitch to both sides of the plate. He'll bust you inside. You have to take the pitch that he gives you and try to think up the middle, and you've seen some hitters go up the middle. You've seen some Mets hitters go the other way. Good hitting on the Mets part today. Mulder getting ready for his second season as a Cardinal. He starts the year three wins away from 100 for his career. Here's Xavier Nady. Came over from the Padres where he hit 261 a year ago. It's slowly toward Eckstein. And they turn it 6-4-3 to end the inning. The Mets get two runs on five hits. And after one, they lead two to nothing. Right foot of Pedro Martinez, already covered with dirt. Wearing the modified shoe, the protective padding inside the shoe, trying to protect that sore toe that's limited him to just one spring training outing prior to today. That was three innings against Baltimore on Sunday. He had an easy first inning today against St. Louis and throws ball one to Scott Rowland. With 235 and an injury shortened season a year ago at shoulder difficulties. And Tony LaRussa thinks he is the biggest key to their season, his ability to come back. Tony says he has Hall of Fame ability. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Well, the reason Roland's so important is not only what he can do with the bat offensively and being in the lineup with Pujols and Edmonds, but defensively, he's a gold glove third baseman. Sends it out of play to the right. Far less than capacity crowd here today. I think a lot of the spring training fans have already made their way back north to get ready for opening day. The Cardinal fans here today. I mentioned their spring training home only about a half an hour away south of here in Jupiter. And there's a seeing eye base hit through the middle for Scott Rowland, the first hit for St. Louis. Friends, get ready to play along with today's game from your mobile phone. We'll tell you more about ESPN Fanarchy in a few minutes. Okay, these two teams played yesterday here. The Mets defeated the Cardinals 6-1. to 
Darren Oliver picked up the victory. Paul Leduca had three hits. As did Xavier Nady. So here's Schumacher. He came into the ball game in the bottom of the first when Rodriguez left with an apparent shoulder injury. Gets it slowly toward Hernandez at second. We'll get the out at first. And Rollins in scoring position with one out. And these two teams played here yesterday. Tony LaRussa arrived by a helicopter. He had a charity event. Of course, he's involved in an animal rescue foundation that's very close to his heart and that of his wife and daughters. They had a function yesterday morning. One of the board of directors arranged for a helicopter to bring Tony over and land on one of the minor league fields. Is that how you got to the park today as no. well? Huh? No, not at all. Well, when you have the third most wins ever for a manager, you could take a helicopter to the ballpark and get away with it. Today just drove up from Jupiter. I came this morning in Duke Castiglione's limo. As you know, he has Duke's specially big. arranged big, transportation. Yeah. Kind of a big New York TV guy, so wherever he goes, he has to have his own driver. Yadier Molina, the batter, rolling at second and one out. The Mets leading two to nothing. In the sixth of seven meetings between these neighbors this spring, they'll play tomorrow in Jupiter and then get ready to head north. Cardinals are going to stop in St. Louis to get a look at their new ballpark before they make their way to Philadelphia. Lifted to left for Cliff Floyd. Carried all the way to the warning track. Molina retired for the second out of the inning. Now Pedro Martinez's first outing this spring last Sunday, he hit 93, 94 miles per hour. His fastball today is 86, 87. What does it mean? You know, Pedro's velocity tends to fluctuate, but this may be that time that most pitchers would go through earlier in spring training where you have a little bit of a dead arm. You don't have that kind of life to your fastball. Pedro has the veteran presence to know he has to pitch. He's going to change speeds, hit his locations as he prepares for the season. Pitching now to Aaron Miles. Second base, a spot that seems to at least theoretically be up for grabs here with the Cardinals. Mark Grezelonic gone, and they have Junior Spivey. He's the heir apparent. He's had a miserable spring. Most of the Cardinal folks you talk to believe Spivey will still be their second baseman at least to start the year. But Tony LaRusso was non-committal in his office. When I asked him, does Miles still have a chance? He said, well, we have two games left in spring training, and he's in there today. So that would indicate, yes, he does have a chance. I'll tell you, this time of spring training, you need uh, somebody to decipher manager speak and what it means uh, when they say it. And, you know, if he's in the lineup today, it's, a good, it's good news for him and bad news for all the other guys vying for that role. One, because he's going to continue to get opportunities to make the team. And two, because, you know, you're close to opening day and he's getting a look. I think Miles is going to end up being the guy. Five, he's hit just 138 this spring. He's made four errors. Hector Luna's hit 185. Miles, as you saw, is hit 333. Two balls and a strike. You mentioned Pedro's velocity. Watching him his last couple of years in Boston, when the velocity started to drop off a bit, it seemed like a lot of times in an outing, you could almost see him warming up as he went along. The velocity would go up and up and up with each inning. Well, and again, I think he's always testing out that toe early in the game as well, and he's going to baby it through and see how much torque he can take on banging that back toe, his right toe, into the ground, as we saw earlier. And the more comfortable he gets, the harder he'll throw. Peterson is the pitching coach. Give me a close eye on Pedro. Tom Glavin is going to be the opening day starter. If Pedro had been healthy, it likely would have been him. Well, many consider it an honor to start on opening day, but Tom Glavin said, yeah, thanks a lot, because <laughs> there are an awful lot of distractions. It's hard to get your focus and settle into your pitching routine with all the pomp and circumstance that comes around on opening day. Ball four, Miles walks with two outs, runners at first and second. Well, they're going to need a healthy Pedro Martinez. As you see, Tom Clappen will start opening day. Victor Zambrano going to pitch game two. 
And Pedro is in line to make the third start of the season. Steve Traxel and Brian Bannister, a rookie uh, surprise uh, to make this rotation and adding to the depth of this pitching staff. That was the big question in recent days for the Mets. Who would be the fifth starter? Would it be Bannister or Aaron Heilman? Mark Mulder, the batter, at 145 last year. Heilman was terrific out of the bullpen the second half of last season, and they liked the prospect of him helping get them to newcomer Billy Wagner, who will be their closer. Well, I think the other issue for the Mets rotation is they really are stocked with six-inning pitchers. Pedro is really a six-inning guy. Tom Glavin is as well. Steve Traxel, back surgery last year. You need depth in the bullpen. You need multiple options to go to every game in that pen when your starters are only going six deep and they don't have that one horse to take them deep to the game to give the bullpen the day off pedro's not that guy anymore so they're going to need depth in heilman i would have done exactly the same thing as the mets did I, if banister and heilman were close banister's the fifth starter and you put heilman back in that spot in the bullpen with jorge julio and juaner sanchez the ball outside two and two on Mulder. Heilman was disappointed. He pitched well down here. He thought he had done everything he could to earn that starting spot. He'd prefer to start. But the Mets think he's more important out of the bullpen, at least to start the year. <laughs> and I agree with you. What they did seemed to make sense with as well as Bannister pitch. Didn't seem like they needed to send him back down to the minors. Well, the, tip. the thing that made it difficult was that Aaron Heilman said he wanted to start. They said, well, go to winter ball. Show us you can do it. So he went to winter ball, went 4-1, and one, had a 2.2 ERA, came to spring training, had a 1.6 ERA starting. He thought he did everything he needed to do to prove he could do it, but for the team. You know, Alfonso Soriano Washington needs to play left field for the team. Well, Heilman for the team needs to be in the bullpen. Mulder strikes out. At least Heilman got to enjoy the nice weather in the Dominican Republic. 2-0 Mets, middle of the second. Mets getting ready to bat in the second. The Cardinals getting ready to move into their new home, New Bush Stadium. With more on that, here's Duke Castiglione. That's right, Sean. The Cards and the Mets will play again tomorrow in Jupiter, Florida. Then from there, they fly to St. Louis, where they hope to get used to the new ballpark. The reason they're doing that, Tony LaRusso told me, is they want to have a workout there, more than anything, to get their feel for the park, to get a feel for how to park, where to park, what the locker room looks like, just the normal things we take for granted. And there's been some reports that the stadium isn't quite finished. As Tony said, hey, as long as the field's ready to go, we can work around some of the inconveniences if the rest of it isn't quite complete. It looks like a beautiful place under 44,000, just under 44,000 seats. I hope they have grass on the field now. And the picture we had had no grass. But that would be helpful. Anderson Hernandez strikes out against Mark Mulder. The first strikeout for the left-hander. One out here in the second. Like when they're talking about it not being quite ready, not having grass might be one of the things they're talking about. The, the grass, the sod has been laid on the field now. Ready for a workout. We're expected to open about 90% capacity in April and be fully complete in July. Pedro Martinez, the batter. Well, kids, uh, don't take notes on this at bat right here. Pedro's strength is pitching. It's not hitting, so he's... It's going to take a lot, of, a lot of pitches, try to work the count a little bit here and try to at least make Mark Mulder work some. About six hits last year, all six of those pitchers were released. <laughs> right after Pedro got those hits. He thought he got a piece of that, and apparently he did. Might be just postponing the inevitable. I thought I saw Pedro say, no, no, I didn't get any part of that at all. <laughs> Can I go sit down now? Oh, my goodness. A little grounder to second. And Aaron Miles threw him out. Two down here in the second. Play along with today's game, friends. Text FAN to 4ESPN. That's 43776. Make correct predictions and get rewards. Standard message rates or other fees may apply. And for more information, go to ESPNFanarchy.com.
Top of the order, second time in as many innings. Jose Reyes led off the Mets first with a double down the left field line and scored the first run of the game. He takes strike one. You know, we saw Pedro hit that ground ball and not really run down to first base. And if you're the Mets dugout, you're saying, great, that's exactly what we want. With that bad toe, you don't want him running quickly down the line. You don't want him accelerating quickly out of the batter's box. You want him to be able to pitch. You don't care if he can run a ground ball out to first base. Breaking ball, Reyes turned as if to bunt and took the ball. Two balls and one strike. Jose Reyes continues to learn how to be a leadoff hitter, to hit behind the pitcher, to give a little bit of rest in the dugout, and take pitches. Just 22 years old from the Dominican Republic. One area of improvement they'll be looking at this year is a higher on base percentage at the top of the order. Reyes walks. That's a good sign. Walked only 27 times all of last year. 696 at bats. Duke. Sean, one of the things that uh, Jose was telling me before the game, Ricky Henderson, who was here in camp, was not only tutoring Jose on his base running and base stealing, he was telling Jose, hey, listen, when you're up there, don't be afraid to take a couple strikes. Don't be afraid. Trust yourself to hit with two strikes and maybe try to draw some walks. Into the first walk issue today by Mulder. Now Laduca, who singled the center to drive in Reyes in the first inning. We looked at ball one. Well, this will be interesting here because Jose Reyes, this is a great running situation for him, and Mark Mulder does have that good move to first base. So this is strength against strength right now. Reyes stole 60 bases to lead the Mets. They led the National League and were second in all of Major League Baseball in stolen bases as a team. They had 153. The Angels had 161. When we talk about Ricky employing Reyes to walk more often, that would help improve the on base percentage, which as we said was dreadful at the top of this Mets order last year. Well, if today's any indication they're feeling good about it, Jose Reyes leads off the first with a double, then Paul LaDuca singles, and they get on base, manufacture a run, and this is going to be critical to the Mets' success because they, if they get guys on in front of Carlos Beltran, David Wright, and Carlos Delgado, they have a chance to score a lot of runs this year, which has really been a big part of the Mets' problems over the last few seasons. Mulder with that good move has him picked off. Well, you called it, Steve. Mulder with the good move. Reyes, a good base dealer. Mulder won that battle. 1 3 6 the scoring, and that ends the inning. Good nothing Mets as we go to the third. Can the Indians take the Central? Can the White Sox repeat their magical season? We start to answer those questions on opening night built by the Home Depot and ESPN2. That's this Sunday at 8 Eastern and in high definition on ESPN2 HD. Before the first pitch, don't forget to join the fellas on baseball tonight presented by Chevrolet. That's at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Top of the order, David Eckstein grounded out his first time up. What do you think? Can the Indians overtake the White Sox? Can the White Sox do it again? I think, I think it's going to be real tough for the Indians to overtake the White Sox. I just love the White Sox pitching. I think Jim Tomey with Paul Konerko, that uh, left-right combination, power combination in the middle of the lineup. I think the White Sox are really the team to beat in all of baseball. I think that they're, they may be better than they were a year ago. Meet the Indians by six games in the final American League Central standings last year. The ball high. Of course, the Minnesota Twins were a fixture in the postseason for a while. They finished 16 games back last year, but they've made a number of moves to try to get back in contention with the White Sox and Indians. Well, it's going to be a great race. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the Twins, they've added some offense, which was really their problem from a year ago. They have a healthy Torrey Hunter back in the pitching there, and the Indians have to hope the pitching can be as good as it was last year as their young hitters continue to grow and develop. Typical Eckstein at bat right there, worked the count, and then drew a walk on a 3-2 pitch. Duke? 
Well, today, starting uh, left fielder John Rodriguez, of course, has left the game here. Rodriguez told me when he was chasing that ball earlier in the first inning, what happened was he started to trip and he saw the wall and he didn't want to hit his face, so he jammed his shoulder into the wall. He tried to come up throwing, couldn't throw, but it has uh, no bearing or it has no relation to his earlier arm injury. All right, Duke, thank you. This next time, the lesson is go face first into the wall. Yeah, exactly right. When you're trying to make a team, you can still make it if you bruise your cheekbone. Juan Encarnacion reached on an error by the shortstop Reyes. He booted his ground ball in the first inning. He's in the hole here, 0-2. I think Cardinal fans who are concerned about some of the changes in the offseason, Steve, see Larry Walker gone and Reggie Sanders gone, and they look at who knows who in left field right now and Encarnacion in right and think they're not as good in both positions. I think that, uh, and it's understandable, I think part of it, though, is the pedigree. You think of Larry Walker, you think of Reggie Sanders, veteran players around for a long time, and part of your subjective gut feeling about them is what they did in the past. They didn't have great years last year. They were injured a lot. Sanders obviously broke his leg late. Uh, Walker was hampered by neck problems all season long. But there is something to say for presence. I mean, I think that there is a value to having that sort of presence that what Larry Walker and Reggie Sanders have. And I think they are less in the corners this year than they were a year ago. And I think a little less at second base as well. Of course, they can probably afford it, given they won 100 games last year. They have so much talent. Mm -hmm. Most of the other starting everyday positions and have a tremendous starting rotation. There are some questions in the bullpen. Third off speed pitch and then Carnacion strikes out for the first out of the inning and the second strikeout of this outing for Pedro Martinez. Well, that was the change up from Pedro. He throws the fastball and he comes right back and pulls the string on it. You see Encarnacion way out in front, trying to hit it halfway to the mound. No chance. So one out. The runner at first, two nothing Mets in the third. Albert Pujols popped out to the first baseman Delgado in foul ground in the first, and he looked at strike one. Had a relatively quiet spring by his standards, but going to bet he'll probably be in the lineup on opening night. Uh, he played the World Baseball Classic and struggled in the World Baseball Classic, trying a little too hard, he said, trying to to put up for the fans in the Dominican Republic and, and get some production and just couldn't do it. And his timing's been off a little bit, but I think the one thing we know for sure, there will be opening day baseball and Albert Pujols will be ready to play. Played five seasons. He's had at least 30 homers in all five. And at least 100 runs batted in in every season. He's the only player in the history of the game to open his career with five straight seasons of 30 or more home runs. A 12th round draft pick out of a small junior college in Missouri. About a year and a half in the minor leagues, he's in the big leagues. I'll tell you that 29 other general managers went to their scouting departments and said, why did we miss this guy? 12th round. I would say the Cardinals get credit for taking him, but they were wrong 11 times before they took him in the 12th round mm -hmm. because as good as he was, he should have been the first pick anybody took in the draft. I love those numbers, his average season. Think of the Cardinals say, all right, Albert, just go out and be average yeah. this year. All we want is average. And he's a... Uh, First class guy. I mean, he is he is a solid citizen, a leader, plays hurt, plays hard. Cardinals return Pujols, the reigning MVP, and Chris Carpenter, the Cy Young Award winner. First Cy Young Award won by a Cardinal since Bob Gibson. 
Well, this guy leading your everyday lineup and Carpenter looking great again this spring leading the pitching staff. They do appear to be in great shape as they try to defend their division title. Well, that is the thing. The nucleus for this Cardinals team is still in place. They're, you know, they're changing the peripheral positions a little bit, but you know that the nucleus is there. And if you get Pujols and Carpenter and Roland and Eckstein and Edmonds doing their job, you're going to have a pretty good season. In the air and well struck in left. Cliff Floyd watching that one go way out of here. A 2 2 pitch taken out of here. Third homer of the spring for Pujols. And the Cardinals have tied the game at two. Well, Albert Pujols has some of the best balance at home plate of any hitter there is. He just never seems fooled. He never seems out in front. If he is fooled a little bit, he keeps his hands back and he gets a fastball middle part of the plate. And that strength, this power, watch his hips rotate through. That's where the power comes from right there. Good piece of hitting. Strong man. Indeed he is. He demonstrated it there. Being with the wind blowing in today there was no doubt that one was going out from the minute it left the bat Jim Edmonds quickly in an 0 and 2 hole when we think about what Albert Pujols has done so far in his career he's 26 years old he's only 26 mm. years old scary fastball up and in let's say uh, Pedro Martinez uh, Stock move there, 0-2 count. Guy hits a home run, let's back somebody off the plate a little bit. Let's try the second time as well. Now look for a change up down and away mm -hmm. to try to get Edmonds to spin off the ball. Edmund strikes out, second strikeout of the inning in the third of the ball game for Pedro Martinez. Well, Pedro had him 0-2 and threw him two pitches up and in to make him aware of the inside part of the plate. And then just said, here, let me throw a little something, take something off and throw it on the outside part of the plate. You see his grip on the ball there. Takes a little bit off of his fastball, really, and just runs it off the plate, and Edmonds can't catch up. Scott Rowland singled his first time up. Wadded foul into the seats and left. And it really is remarkable that a year ago the Cardinals win 100 games when Roland only plays, I think, 55, 56 games on the season because he's so important to their offense. He's a big part of their run production, and he's so important defensively on a sinker ball staff. His defense is critical at third base, and Abraham Nunez filled in admirably at third base last year for them, and he's now moved on to the Philadelphia Phillies, but... I agree with Tony LaRusso. Scott Rowland's critical to their success this year. Down his favor, three balls and a strike. Two outs, the base is empty. 2-2 two -two game in the third. Hammer to center, a base hit. So Rowland's two for two. They on the board with two down. And if you're in the Mets dugout watching Pedro Martinez, you're not alarmed by anything, but this certainly isn't an electric Pedro Martinez on the mound today. His stuff is a little bit flat. Fastball doesn't have that life to it that you like to see as the ball gets to the plate. Sometimes he has that pitch, looks like it hops at the hitter. He doesn't have that today. I have to hope he's just getting his work in and building up arm strength right now and keep him healthy. If Schumacher took a strike, he grounded a second in the second. And a ball in the dirt. Thirty pitches in the inning for Pedro Martinez. With three innings last time out, you wonder if he'll go much more than that today, given that it is 
a taxing inning and a taxing outing. 65 pitches through two and two thirds. Well, he threw 35 pitches his last time out. I'm supposing this will be his last inning. He's laboring out there right now. Change up down and in, and LaDuke is going to go chat with him. We talk about how important Pedro is to the Mets season. You know, when, when he pitches, it is an event. I mean, it is, it's a different day at Shea Stadium in New York when he's on the mound than when any of the other guys in the rotation pitch. They can't afford a month and a half of Pedro on the disabled list. They can miss a start here and there, but his energy, what he brings every fifth day is too important to their team to take a chance and go on the disabled list. Full count now on Schumacher. The sixth batter of the inning. Tony La Russa has been impressed by Schumacher this spring. Hit 281. Doesn't hit for a lot of power, but typically gets the bat on the ball. Hold foul. Another change up sent down by the Cardinals bullpen. The Cardinals always seem to find a way to have a guy like a Skip Schumacher or John Rodriguez and these young guys who can fill in when some of the veterans get hurt and give some production. They don't seem intimidated in the big league. Fastball for strike three. That ends the inning. Pedro struck out three in the inning, but he also gave up a two-run homer to Albert Pujols, a long one that has tied the game at two. Sean McDonough with Steve Phillips back in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Albert Pujols, a two-run homer. The Cardinals have tied up the Mets at 2-2 as we go to the bottom of the third. We're pleased to be joined during the inning by... Cardinals manager Tony La Russa. Paul LaDuca long foul ball and left. And Tony, perhaps first you could tell us about uh, John Rodriguez. What do you know about what happened to him? Well, he, uh, he jammed his shoulder against the fence. And what's troublesome is that early in the spring, he had a sore, 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 sore shoulder in the same place. So we don't really know for sure how bad it is, but we're concerned. Well, Tony, last time out, Mark Mulder got knocked around early in the game and settled down a little bit. And Again, today in the first inning, some, some struggles and some CNI ground balls. Any concerns about Mulder so far this spring? Oh, he's healthy. He's throwing the ball great. His location hasn't been always, you know, what, what he needs it to have. But uh, the good thing about last time was that he fixed what was wrong, and uh, I thought defensively we did a real good, down, a sh good job to shut down that inning. Two and one the count on LaDuca. In the hole, next down a long throw. And Pujols, a nice stretch. Good play for the first out of the inning. Uh, Tony, just a couple of days left here in Florida. I know you're going to make a quick trip to St. Louis to get a look at the new ballpark. Uh, anything in particular looking for any unresolved issues or roster spots that could be sorted out here in the last two days? Well, we, uh, we have w two players for one spot now. I don't know what John's situation is. We have two players for one spot. Uh, and we have three pitchers for one spot. And uh, we don't want it to go to Lamar, so we're hoping that uh, by the end of the day we can fix both those issues. Now well, those Beltron grounds out. Well, we see the ground ball go to Scott Rowland at third base, and you didn't have him for most of the year last year. How much more comfortable having him back in the lineup for you are you going to be this season? I'm sorry. Uh, well, you see me smiling because... Uh, getting Scott back is a huge plus for us, and uh, all spring long, he's, he's getting better and better. He's got a couple of hits today. Uh, he's, if we're going to be good, he's going to be an important part of it, and so far, he's on time. Two outs, the base is empty. Mulder looking for an easy one, two, three inning as he pitches to Carlos Delgado. And I know, Tony, you're here in spring training, you've still had a little time to spend working with your Animal Rescue Foundation. Could you Tell the folks at home what that's about. I know it's a labor of love for you and your family. Well, the players kid me all the time that I work harder for them than I do for the Cardinals. <laughs> and I tell them they're worth more worthwhile than the players. <laughs> and we have a lot of dog lovers, so they agree. But uh, it's just uh, it's a rescue uh, organization. And obviously, we, as people, rescue dogs and cats. But we spend a lot of time 
rescuing people with using our animals and seniors down to kids and victims of violence. It's a, it's a great organization. We work very hard for it. People can learn a lot more about it at ARF.net. We encourage them to do so. Tony and his family involved in a project to pay off the remaining balance on a beautiful facility they've built out there. A base hit in the left for Delgado. He's aboard with two outs. It's ARF.net. Uh, Tony, hard to improve on 100 wins, but uh, as we head into the season, you like your club? You feel good about the way things are shaping up for you heading into the year? Well, you know, 100 is a number. What we want to do is uh, we want to get into October again, and uh, we know the competition is tough. Uh, I like a lot of things about our club. Uh, I don't think we're quite on time, but uh, I think we're going to have a good attitude about playing hard and playing the game right. So, I mean, I think we'll have a great chance to win, but uh, we, ha we have some issues. I mean, there's some things that we need to really improve. Uh, Tony, spring training can be a long grind at times. Would you like it to be over now? I mean, are you glad it's over, or would you prefer to have another week to sort through some of those issues? That's a great question, Steve, because uh, we've always felt you know, you could add a week or two for pitchers and subtract a week or two for players. Right. Uh, and that's kind of how we feel now. We wouldn't mind if our pitchers had a little more time and uh, have our players take a vacation, come back about five, six days from now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, you, starting Monday, we start playing for real, and, and we'll be ready. Well, Tony, we appreciate the visit as always, and good luck to, to you and the Cardinals in this season. We hope you enjoy your new home. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony LaRusso. Third winningest manager of all time in Major League Baseball's managerial win list. And he's a very youthful looking and acting 61. I mean, he's the kind of guy who could manage for a lot longer if he chooses to. David Wright is the batter with Delgado at first and two outs here in the third in a 2-2 game. Yeah, you look at Tony La Russa and he, you can tell he's a little bit distracted. John Rodriguez's injury, I think, is in his head right now trying to figure out what do we do now. And that's, uh, managers obsess about those last moves at the end of camp. Pitch in the dirt, skip back to the backstop. A wild pitch gets Delgado to second. First wild pitch thrown by Mark Mulder. You know, they're trying to finalize the roster, figure out who's that last reliever, who's the last player, and then when somebody gets hurt, it disrupts it all, and you've got to rethink everything. And, you know, managers, general managers, this time of year, you're you're at, you're at, waking up in the middle of the night thinking about, well, if I configure the team this way, this is how it works, and if I go the other way, that's how it works. And, and in the end, you know what, two weeks into the season, you change it all around that's anyway, right. so. Payoff hey, pitch, pulled foul wide of third. You look at those last few decisions that clubs have to make on rosters. You wonder, well, you know, it's the 25th guy. Why do you? It can win you a ball game. And, mm -hmm. and during the, you know, you figure you play 162 games. A game here or there ultimately can be the thing that decides it. And guys like Tony La Russa want specific roles and situations covered in games, and that's what he tries to sort through in spring training. Right, sends it to right up into the sunshine for Encarnacion, and that ends the inning. After three in Port St. Lucie, the Cardinals and Mets tied at two. Back in Port St. Lucie, the Cardinals and Mets tied at two as we go to the fourth inning, and we're pleased to be joined by the manager of the New York Mets, Willie Randolph, getting ready to begin his second season as skipper of the Mets. Willie, thanks for joining us. Okay, guys. What do you think of Pedro so far? Well, I think he's throwing the ball pretty well, and the one pitch he got up in the zone to Pools, and you definitely can't do that, but... Uh, you know, he's not vintage Pedro page right now, but getting his work in, he's, he feels healthy, and that's the main concern for me. Well, one thing you know is that he will be in your rotation. You yes. added Brian Bannister as the fifth starter uh, into the season with Aaron Heilman going to the bullpen. Can you talk about that decision a little bit and how tough it was to, to, to finalize that? Well, it was a real tough decision, Steve, because, uh, you know, was, both those guys came into camp competing for their fifth spot, and uh, they both pitched well. And, and I don't think Aaron lost the, the spot, but with the way that Bannister stood up for us and came into his own in the brief spring that he had, uh, we just felt like, you know, Aaron obviously get, makes us better in, in the bullpen. He just lengthens things in the bullpen for us, gives us a, a quality arm. We can pitch the righties and lefties. And, and, you know, when you look at the, if you weigh both sides of it, you know, he goes to the bullpen, we get that much better. As a starter, uh, I think we're pretty much even, even though the kid hasn't proven himself yet. But Bannister's throwing the ball well this spring, and we're looking for good things from him. 
And team is pitching to Yadier Molina. And the count is full. Bottom third of the order for St. Louis here in the fourth inning. Willie, how about for your team? Any unresolved issues? I know at that time of the spring where everybody's trying to figure out the last guy or two on the roster, the last pitcher or two. Is that sort of what you and Omar Minai and your staffs are working through? Yeah, we'll make a decision finally today after the game on uh, who's going to be the... Uh, well, we're probably going to lean towards 11 pitchers right now, um, but uh, we're going to make that decision after the game. Uh, obviously, uh, Victor Diaz is the guys on the bubble for us, uh, and uh, you have Jose Lima and Oliver who are in the mix also. So we'll make that decision. It'll probably just be, be one, one cut, maybe two cuts, and we'll be ready to go. Well, players should always hear it first rather than us, although we'd love it if you just want to give us the roster while we're doing this. But, but no, I, I thought about that, and I said, no, I mean, I've been watching TV. Yeah, I you know. Tell everybody, yeah. Well, when you said 11 pitchers, I think Victor Diaz, if he's watching somewhere, might be uh, Oh, okay, smiling. he figured it out, huh? Okay. No, no, they, listen, one thing in spring training, players become mathematicians. They, they know. They know. They yeah. know where they fit into the scheme of things. And, you know, what we've seen... Uh, Anderson Hernandez at second base make a nice play today and uh, you know as a former second baseman you know a little bit about that position can you break him down and what you're feeling about him right now well you know he's coming this camp uh, even though he's a converted shortstop and he's done a nice job for us we we're looking primarily for a guy who's going to catch the ball over there play solid defense give us some range he brings all those things to the table uh, but he's he's held himself he's been very cool he's been very under control and that's what I like when I see that young player he has good hands good feet uh, a strong arm which which allows him to be able to make the double play really well so you know he's a baby he's learning but uh, we can get him going uh, until Max so he gets back we'll, we'll play it out and see how things go um, he's gonna play and if he plays well he's gonna stay out there for me but Max so coming back and uh, I'm really pleased with what I've seen from the kid he's gonna give us uh, some speed uh, in that eighth spot he, he, he's a good bunner uh, he's a smart kid also for a youngster he knows how to play the game so I've been pleased with it with his progress this spring Two and two the count is Pedro Martinez works to Aaron Miles. Pitcher Mark Mulder on deck. Two two game here in the fourth. Runner at first Molina after the walk. Nobody out. We're visiting with Willie Randolph the manager of the Mets. Lazy fly to right for Nady. One out. Willie they say everything's easier the second time around but as you head into your Second year as manager, has it been easier running a camp and dealing with all the issues that a manager has to deal with? Yes, it, it has been a lot more comfortable for me. Um, uh, you know, knowing my personnel a lot better, uh, having a better feel for your players. Uh, you know, the WBC kind of hurt us a little bit, but uh, we got the guys back in good shape, and um, now we're trying to just get, you know, get the rhythm going according to the season. But. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we feel real good about. Um, you know the change we made and I feel good knowing the staff a little bit better and, and running spring training we, we've had a nice spring but the bottom line for me is just really knowing more about the organization some of the young players that had an opportunity to play you know while the guys were gone uh, it's been beneficial also so um, you know, we made some some big moves and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having that uh, you know playoff force at the end well really one of the big moves you guys made in the offseason was bringing in closer Billy Wagner and we've talked a lot about Pedro Martinez's toe but for Billy Wagner, it's been his fingers, his left middle finger, the, the tendon sheath there has mm -hmm. been a problem. How is that right now for him? No, he's fine. Billy's fine. We shut him down for about a week, and he didn't throw, even pick up a ball. But uh, when he started throwing again, he said he felt fine. Uh, matter of fact, the other day, he was, he was throwing lights out on, in the bullpen. And uh, uh, we, we might get him in before we break camp. If not, he told me he's 100% and ready to go. Yeah, there's been some speculation you might use him tomorrow. Yeah, it's possible. Over the next time the batter, he takes a strike. Willie, we appreciate the visit. Good luck to you and the Mets this season. Okay, guys, take Good luck, care. Willie. All right, bye bye. Willie Randolph, the manager of the Mets. Next time, a line drive base hit over the head of Reyes. Here comes Molina around to score. And the Cardinals lead for the first time today, three to two. On a base hit by Eckstein. As usual, he's doing damage in that top spot in the order. He walked and scored on the Pujols homer in his last plate appearance. Well, David Eckstein's such a pesky little hitter. He has the ability to wait for the ball to get so deep in the zone before he makes contact. A great two-strike approach. And I tell you, for a little guy, he drove in a lot of runs last year. A very important part of this Cardinal offense. 
in the last tune up here for Steve uh, Pedro for uh, Steve for Pedro <laughs> or for you as well <laughs> no, tune up for tune me up, tune uh, that's before right. you go to opening day my Texas. toe's all right though I'm your toe is all right asking. would you be a little concerned about Pedro going into the regular season with just two outings in a regular spring training game and having this be the most recent before his first big league start in the regular seat I think I'd have to be a little bit concerned I mean not overly concerned you know he's a veteran guy you know every spring pitchers have an outing like this where they just get knocked around they're not as sharp they're up in the zone things look flat it's part of building up that arm strength so you don't get overly concerned about it because you know that that once you're playing in the season you know everybody's gonna be hyped up a little more I think Pedro will be okay he's getting his, his work in though Encarnacion lines one to right and Nady circled it and made the catch and that ends the inning but the Cardinals get a run and they lead three to two in the fourth three to two Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the fourth of course the big news in baseball yesterday the announcement by Commissioner Bud Selig an investigation into steroid use led by former Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell and I don't know about you, Steve, but I'm really ready for the regular season to start, and hopefully steroid talk will be at a minimum. I think we're at the point now where the fans, the media, the players, everybody involved in the game said, okay, go ahead and investigate, and when you have something noteworthy to tell us, tell us, but until then, enough already about steroids. Well, that's why I'm surprised at the timing of the announcement. I mean, you're getting ready for the season. You want to get everybody excited, talking about baseball enthused about your team going out to the ballpark and then this is a self-inflicted wound this time by major league baseball it's not uh, the house committee and government reform this is just you know what we're gonna go and do this to ourselves uh, i tell you I'm, I'm confused by it i thought that uh, a year ago but Selig talked about you know we're not going to go back to the past we can't change what happened let's learn from it and put t testing in place they've done that now it seems to me that they're going to go back and inflict these wounds and ultimately what are we going to learn that we didn't already know and what do you do with the information once you get it i mean i don't know where you possibly go with this from this point on well, those are all good questions xavier nady the batter three for three yesterday to get out of a one for 29 slump i know he was happy to get out of that before the regular season began yeah, it strikes many as now a response to these books that have come out recently alleging steroid use on the part of several major league players most notably Barry Bonds fly ball to right caught by Encarnacion and you just wonder how this group led by George Mitchell will be able to do their work. The players really don't have to cooperate if they don't want to. We had Roger Kosak, ESPN legal analyst, saying last night if he were advising any of these players, he would tell them not to cooperate. So where do you go to get information? And, and you're going to go down. And then what is the standard by which you're evaluating guilt? I mean, is it reasonable down reasonable doubt is it preponderance of the evidence and, and what do you do do you have a press conference every time you find out somebody did something or that they didn't something it's very confusing anderson hernandez grounds out to aaron miles in an easy one two three inning for mark Mulder. after four the cardinals lead the mets three to two back in port st lucy heading to the fifth inning and st louis Leads New York three to two. Pedro Martinez's start over after four innings, and he's relieved by Victor Zambrano, who will be a part of their starting rotation. As a matter of fact, they have him scheduled to go in the second game of the regular season behind Tom Glavin. Well, you see his numbers there from last year: 170 hits and 166 in the third innings, but the 77 walks. It's a lot of base runners. Zambrano has electric stuff, but he has to be able to command it in the strike zone. That has been the challenge throughout his entire career. He was greeted by Albert Pujols, who took ball one inside. In the air and left, he's already homered to left once today, and he's done it again. Pujols hit a two-run homer in the third. He takes the second pitch thrown by Zambrano. 
Over the fence and straight away left for his second home run of the ball game and the Cardinals lead four to two. Well, it's been a little bit of a slow spring as we said for Albert Pujols and you know it's just timing until he's going to heat up. Well he just chose today to start heating up and that's the way you want to start your season with your best hitter swinging his best. You see Zambrano missed with a fastball came back in with a fastball down and in right into Pujols' wheelhouse and he hits it a mile. Well, you see Albert Pujols just looking for that fastball. He was ahead 1-0 and in the count. He just keyholed the pitch he was looking for. And when he can do that and he gets it, you know he's going to hit it out of the ballpark. Jim Edmonds, the batter, 2-1 and one the count. He has lined a second and struck out today. Pedro Martinez pitched four innings. He allowed three runs on four hits, including a homer, walked three, and struck out three. Joe Hippus is the new catcher for New York and Victor Diaz, who I think is on the team based on what Willie Randolph said to us. I think he pretty much gave that away. Even though, even though he was he came into it knowing he wasn't going to tell us anything, I think he gave it away. Yeah. <laughs> He's in right field, is Diaz. I'm not sure he knows. Should we yell out to him? Maybe Duke can get out there and <laughs> give him a tip coming off the field. Well, the issue was 11 pitchers or 12. If they decide to go at 12, Diaz was probably the odd man out. But Willie Randolph indicated during our chat last inning he thought they'd likely go with 11. That's not good news for guys like Jose Lima or Darren Oliver, perhaps even both. And I'm a little bit surprised that they would go with 11, only because you have Pedro not really stretched out to where he should be during the regular season. And as we talked, a lot of six-inning pitchers, so you're going to be in that pen quite a bit. There are off days mixed in uh, during April that uh, buy you some time, but I figured the Mets for a 12-man staff. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Zimbrano. And here's Schumacher with a bounding ball to second. Hernandez to Delgado to end the inning. But Pujols has done it again. His second homer of the ball game has given St. Louis a 4-2 lead. Cardinals lead 4-2. They got three of those runs off Pedro Martinez. A moment ago, he spoke with Duke, and Duke asked him how he felt today. Uh, I felt pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, you know, coming off a uh, three inning, I got my pitches in. Uh, I wasn't in command of, you know, the way I used to be, but uh, I feel great. I feel strong. I feel like I can throw my fastball in time and push it, actually push it. But uh, as you saw there, I need to pitch a little bit more. How close to 100% is that right big toe? Uh, well, I, it's not near 100%, but but it's, it's good enough for me to go out there and pitch. And once I get into the game, I forget about it. I just pitch. You will start the third game of the Mets season next Thursday night on ESPN versus the Nationals. How deep do you think you could go in that game? Uh, I'll try to go as deep as I, you know, my stamina allows me to go. And uh, once you get in the game, you just don't have any limits. I, I don't set any limits for, for myself out there. But uh, today, uh, I won 87 pitches in the previous outing, 30-something, and I feel the same way. So my stamina is there. I just need to get command of my pitches and, and, and actually work around everything else. Pedro, thank you for your time. That's great. Pedro said 87 pitches. Well, you're listening to the interview Victor Diaz out on the fly ball to right and Mark Mulder has settled into a nice outing now similar outing to the one he had last time out struggles in the first inning and then solid thereafter he's retired five in a row and seven of the last eight Mets hitters. Well shall we, we listen to Pedro there I mean I, he's really missing two spring training starts maybe a third. He went from 35 pitches to 87 pitches. He missed that start in between. That might take you to 60, 65. 
then you might go to 75 and then to 90 or 100. So ideally, in the ideal world, you'd like Pedro to stay behind, make a couple more starts to make sure that he's ready to go, but he's that critical to this team. Ray has had a healthy hack at a 3-1 pitch. Chopped on the left, very difficult play for Rex Conley. Reyes' speed, no chance at all. An infield hit, and Reyes is enjoying a perfect afternoon. He has doubled, walked, and now singled. And probably the best at bat that they like the most today is the walk. I mean, you love the guy get a hit and do it a little bit, but to be able to get a walk, and Jose Reyes is going to hit for a good average because he can run. Speed is a tool and a weapon for him, and a lot of infield hits. Not, there is not a shortstop in the major leagues that's going to throw Jose Reyes out from deep in the hole right there. He's far too fast. There's Joe Hippus. Seen limited action this spring. He's three for seven. 26-year-old out of Appleton, Wisconsin, drafted by a fellow named Steve Phillips. <laughs> yeah, you were looking at me to help you with the pronunciation of the name. He'll be catching a triple A, helping out, backing up there a little bit. And good organizational guy, waiting for an opportunity. Provided his last uh, season between Binghamton and double A and Norfolk and triple A. Didn't hit much, 216 and... 65 games in double-A and 194 in 26 games in triple-A. But he can handle the pitching staff and he's a good organizational kid, does anything you want him to do. And when you do that, you get a couple bones, you get some hits at bat and spring training. And he strikes out. Well, interesting to see here whether Jose Reyes, last time we're in this situation, Mulder on the mound, Jose Reyes on first. Mulder picked him off. But again, another running situation if you're going to play the game. Try to get in scoring position. In this day and age, baseball come trendy not to steal bases. A lot of teams prefer to wait for the big boppers to drive in those guys at the top of the order who get on base. But that's not... The Mets approach. It's not. Omar Manaya, the general manager, he's not a money ball disciple. He's a tools and kind of an old school baseball guy learning from some of the old time scouts. And, and Willie Randolph, too. Willie running and speed and hit and run. Those were all part of his game as a player as well. There's an interesting article in the local paper here today. Last year, the average Major League Baseball team as a team stole 85 bases. 10 years ago was 116. So on an average per team, 30 fewer stolen bases over a 10-year stretch. That's a lot. I mean, really, since Ricky Henderson came out of the scene, that's when teams started to run, when the Cardinals had all that team speed. And Ricky Henderson was stealing bases. It became in vogue to do it. Now, when there have been studies of the value of outs in the game, you know, there are only certain situations where teams run now. I mean, you have some clubs that, I mean, the Boston Red Sox rarely will, as you see, watch their games a lot. They rarely send runners anymore, but the Mets are built differently. They're built with this being part of the weapons of their team. Carlos Beltran can run. Jose Reyes can run. Every once in a while, Cliff Floyd, David Wright can steal a base, and they're going to try to be more aggressive and make things happen. Well, you know the count on Beltron. Ball four. It's possible Mulder could be tiring. He started the inning with 55 pitches. He's up to 70 now. You know, it's interesting. Pitch counts are important, but it's also how compacted those pitches are. If you, if you throw 25 pitches in an inning, that can take a toll on you more than if you spread out those 25 pitches over two innings. So... You know, you're at a time right now, you see Reyes kind of jumping around off second base out there, just trying to disrupt things and pull the defense around and get Mulder distracted as well a little bit. But, you know, at, when pitchers get fatigued, you have to work through it. It's how you build up the arm strength. Just push through that point of fatigue a little bit, make a few more pitches, and know that you can push the limit a little bit more. Mulder has walked two. He throws strike one to Carlos Delgado. 
Here's Muller, a solid number two behind Chris Carpenter. And one of the big stories of the spring has been Sidney Ponson trying to get his career back on track, getting his life together, addressing some off the field issues involving alcohol and He's had a nice spring. He got roughed up a little bit yesterday, but for the most part, he's pitched very well. That's an interesting story because I, I, it did not seem like the Cardinals play to me to take this kind of guy with the types of team that they put together. But Ponson with a lot of uh, well-documented off-field issues, but he has his life together, and he's fitting in well on this club. Grounded to second. That's where you call where Aaron Miles was positioned out of shallow <laughs> right. And that ends the inning. The Mets strand two. They've left five, and they trail four to two after five. Cardinals lead four to two. Sixth inning, ESPN and ESPN2 return to the Diamond Monday for three opening day games. First at one Eastern time on ESPN. It's the Nationals against these Mets. Then at two Eastern on ESPN2, the Red Sox take on the Rangers. And at four Eastern on ESPN, it's the Braves and the Dodgers. Opening day built by the Home Depot. On ESPN and ESPN2, Monday, available in high definition on ESPN HD and ESPN2 HD. Julio Franco into the ball game to take over for Carlos Delgado at first base. Well, I guess an old-timers game just broke out, huh? Well, he's still playing, 47 and a half years old. Still loving the game. So he wants to play till he's 50, and who would bet against him? In fact, a lot of people think he won't stop when he gets to 50. He may already be 50, quite honestly, yes. and, and uh, in the best shape of anybody on the field and lives his life uh, to be a baseball player. Field on the first and no swing. Yadier Molina, the leadoff hitter. Cardinals trying to build on their 4-2 to lead. They've been out hit by them at 7-5, but Albert Kuholtz has hit a couple of home runs among those five St. Louis hits. Uh, Julio Franco, uh, we had done a game with Bobby Cox and the Braves earlier this year, and he said they are going to miss him terribly. He was such a leader on that team. Great impact on the young players. Line to right, and that's a hit. The second given up by Victor Zimbrano, who's beginning his second inning of relief. He gave up a leadoff home run to Pujols last inning. Well, it's been an interesting career for Julio Franco when he first came around a long, long time ago. He was known for a guy who enjoyed the nightlife, and he credits Tony Bernazard, who was one of his teammates in Cleveland, for convincing him that that was not the way to go. He wanted to get the most out of his abilities. Of course, Tony's now in the front office with the Mets. He is one of the special assistants with the Mets, and uh, I mean, Julio Franco, the, the, the stuff he eats in the clubhouse is, is just uh, famous with his teammates. He'll, he'll eat egg whites, he'll eat raisins. I mean, he, he looks at his food as fuel, not as food. He doesn't care about taste, he doesn't care about anything else. And other guys are looking at him going, you're going to eat that? And this guy, he looks, I mean, he, he's in the best shape of anybody out there. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's he's been a role model for a lot of young players. And the Mets are glad to have him. Aaron Miles, the hitter, he doesn't care about taste of the food he could have grown up in our house and been happy here he was on the field before the game offering his expertise in a couple drills you know talking over some fielding plays they also had him over at third base we were doing some base running drills and he was talking to a lot of the guys about taking the lead off at third base he's been around for a long time and you know you know he loves to play the game I mean he played here in the states but he went to Mexico Korea Japan Wherever, if he couldn't find a job in the States, he was going to play somewhere, and, and uh, he plays because he loves it, and there's clearly going to be a coaching job for him on somebody's staff when his playing days are over. In 2022. Exactly. <laughs> Two and one on Miles. He has walked and fly to right, hit and run on, and it's bounced by Franco. Molina on his way to third, so they execute perfectly. And Miles having a nice day, trying to solidify perhaps the starting second base job. Tony LaRusso said before the game, that's still open for Miles, and he's had a good day. Well, uh, that's a great point because spring training games are a lot about performance, but but oftentimes it's about execution and being able to do the little things. For Tony LaRusso, these guys that are auditioning, 
when he gives you a play, when he gives you a bunt, when he gives you a hit and run, and you execute it, that gets logged in the back of his head, and that's one of the things that scores a point for you. Mulder sounded like he cracked as bad as he fouled that out of play to the left. If he did, he'll go get a new weapon. Now the Cardinals, uh, this is a situation first and third with the pitcher up the plate. Mulder broke his bat, but he's going back to the dugout, and I'm sure Tony La Russa may have hollered something to him to grab your bunting bat. They squeeze bunt more than anybody in baseball, and they get it done successfully. 11 successful squeeze bunts last year. Good situation here with a man on first and third. It could be a sacrifice and an RBI. Turned the bunt and looked at the ball. One and one on Mulder. Nobody out. Runners at first and third. The Cardinals batting in the sixth against Victor Zimbrano, who came in after four innings from Pedro Martinez. The other thing that happens in spring training games, as much as you try to see what your team can do, you're sending a message to the other dugout that this is a situation that we may put a play on so that later during the season when this same thing comes up, Willie Randolph will be thinking, aha, I remember back in spring training. This is what Tony La Russa did. I better beware and maybe put on a play myself to try to stop it. Almost swung away that time and fouled it onto the screen. Well, Mulder's a good guy to have up in this situation because he can bunt and he has a pretty good swing. Very athletic guy. He's not trying to trick the other team. This guy can handle the bat and really could squeeze bunt or put a pretty good hack on and get a, an RBI on a sack fly. Jay Kendo, the third base coach. Zimbrano, 30-year-old right-hander from Venezuela. Missed outside. And Tony La Russa is one of the best at playing head games with his opponents. I mean, he really is a very thoughtful manager. He's always thinking, what else can I do, not only to help me win today, but to help me maybe steal a win sometime later in the season. Strike three at the knees. Mulder wasn't so sure. It's the third strikeout for Zimbrano in an inning and a third. One out, the runner still at the corners. A pretty good breaking ball by Zambrano there, but now another situation. David Eckstein up. Does Tony La Russa start the runner on first base? Do a little hit and run, try to get people moving in the infield to try to steal this run. This is an important run. You're up two runs to make it a 5-2 game would give a much different feel in the Mets dugout. Eckstein's been a hot hitter, single to drive in a run in the fourth. He's hit safely now in 10 of his last 11 games. Hit 500 during that span. You wonder psychologically if you go north and with the attitude, boy, I'm hot and ready for the season begin, or if you're thinking, maybe I just had my hot streak at the end of spring training and I'm due to cool off. Well, I tell you what, I mean, there are a lot of times. I mean, Andrew Jones last year hit 10 home runs in spring training, started the season, and he was just dying. Now, he turned it on pretty good once he got it going. But there is something to be said for saving your hits for the season. And the one thing we know that regular season performance or spring training performance just doesn't really mean anything unless you get into the season and it meant something. I mean, you just so many guys go from one way to the other. They struggle in spring, get off to a great start, have a great spring, and struggle when the season starts. And I'll tell you what, I'd like to be just starting to come into my own like Albert Pujols has today as the season's ready to kick off. Well, Zambrano has settled into his regular season pace. Now, one of the things the Mets worked on this spring is trying to slow the running game a little bit for their opponents. They struggled last year with Piazza behind the plate. Laduca throws a little bit better. So their pitchers are working on holding runners, and oftentimes they're throwing over to first, but a lot of times it's just holding 
and letting the runner on first legs get heavy so that he can't get a good jump. A little lob out of play to the right. Jason Brown probably hasn't worked very much with Hippus either. No. Nope. And catcher back there. Tony La Russa had the runner started in that situation. David Eckstein trying to punch it through the hole on the right side. Now the Cardinal team without Reggie Sanders, Larry Walker, they're not as potent an offensive club. They're going to have to try to manufacture a little bit more this year than in the past. Swing and a miss. And again, a deep count for Eckstein. He's had a terrific spring following up the excellent year of a year ago. See the numbers there, 87 hits with two strikes. That's a guy who's supremely confident that he can make contact. We saw him swing and miss there. He doesn't do that very often. With two strikes, he'll battle and battle, falling off pitches, giving himself a chance finally to find a pitch he can drive. And just keep fouling them off until you do get one you can drive. You know, a lot of times the big strapping power hitters don't like to shorten their stroke with two two strikes on them. They still want to wail for the fences. For David Eckstein, it's not about pride for him. It's about execution. He just wants to do something to help the team win. He doesn't care if he bloops one down the first baseline or if he gets an infield hit or he rips one into the gap. He just wants to get a hit to help the team win. I'm going to have him to walk more, but he has a tough time taking a close pitch for two strikes when he feels like he can foul one off until he gets one that he can handle. Hal McCray, their hitting coach, said Eckstein has a small strike zone because of his size, and he wants to make David have the pitchers pitch into that strike zone more often. Well, he's like a lot of guys. That ball up in the zone toward your eyes, it looks good, but it's awfully tough to catch up with and make contact in a situation. And that actually would be the pitch right now with Zambrano that I'd run him a high fastball and see if I can't get him to pop something up right here. Next time got married in the offseason. Married the woman he met while he's playing in Anaheim, actress Ashley Drain. He had acupuncture here this spring, helped him get rid of a flu bug that went through their team. And he said it also helped with his balance. You're going to try that after the no. game? I think you could recommend a good place down the, down the road. Jupiter there if you want. Good acupuncture place. Help your balance. I don't know if Duke Castiglione's limo will take us <laughs> in that direction <laughs> on the way to the airport. Well, players do some funny things to get themselves ready to play and get on the field. Well, he went 10 for 16 right after he got the acupuncture, so good balance. The rest of the team might have been lined up to have a couple of needles stuck in them. Bounce down to third. And then they get the out on Eckstein at first. Right, look, the runner back to third. So two outs and runners at second and third here in the sixth inning with St. Louis leading four to two. There's Juan Encarnacion. They've reached on an error, struck out in line to right. 0 for 3 today. Line to left. And caught by Floyd. Nice running catch. The Cardinals threaten but do not score. They lead 4 to 2 in the sixth. 4 2 St. Louis as we roll to the bottom of the sixth. Here's Duke Castiglione with Paul LaDuca. Yes, we are with the man that caught Pedro Martinez today. Paul, how did you think Pedro threw the ball? I thought he threw the ball well. You know, we, we did certain things today we probably weren't going to do in the season. You know, he told me he wanted to work on his fastball command. So we threw a ton of fastballs and he wanted to uh, work on his slider a little bit. So, you know, I think the last inning he, you know, humped it up a little bit. And, you know, there's always that thing in the back of your mind where he, he needs to let it go a little bit to make sure everything feels good and and I thought he threw the ball really well. 
Paul, you're such a nice guy. You're the new guy in camp. We've got video of what happened the other day. What happened to get you kicked out of the game? Well, you know, I, it's spring training. You got to work on how to get thrown out, too. So, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those things. It was hot out, and, um, you know, Tommy Gladden was throwing. I felt he was getting squeezed a little bit, and, you know, we're trying to get things done. And got out of hand. I'm trying to set a streak. That's three years in a row of spring training. Just set the tone, you know. Now to a serious topic I know you feel very strongly about. Yesterday, the commissioner appoints uh, Senator George Mitchell to look at a baseball's past steroids and performance enhancing drugs. Your reaction to that? And, you know, it's a little skeptical. You know, it's just one of those things where I think it's going to be really tough. You know, um, the gambling probe would happen with, you know, Pete Rose is something that they have on record. I think the steroid thing, there's no record. Everything's thrown out of the door. I mean, uh, it's going to be a little difficult. I, I you know, I, I like Barry and I'm a good friend of Barry. And, um, you know, I'm one of those guys that, you know, if he did use steroids, he did. But, you know, I think a lot of things that gets left out is what about the pitchers that threw it up there? Um, I, I beg to differ if, if those guys didn't use it at all either. So um, I think it's one of those things that's going to be difficult and I'm um, just not a big, big fan of it. Paul, thanks for your time. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Guys, back to you. All right. Thank you, Duke. Words we haven't heard all that often. I like Barry. You know, he, <laughs> there are a lot of people who do like Barry, but his uh, detractors seem to be much more vocal in expressing their opinion of him than he, those who like him. He does have a lot of people that uh, tend to, to dislike him, but there's also what seems to motivate Barry Bonds at times as well. And you know, we see Paul Aduka down there. We saw him get ejected from that game, but I think that that's somewhat calculated on his part. Have Floyd picked off. A nice play by Eckstein to pick up the low throw from Pujols. That's the second Met picked off by Mark Mulder today. Well, Mark Mulder, we talked about early in the game. He has one of the better left-handed pitching moves to first base. And the Mets trying to make something happen. Floyd kind of trying to get a walking start over there. And Mulder just picks it up easily. And Pujols to Eckstein. Yeah, there's nothing to it right there. You know, but back to Laduca and his situation, somewhat calculated getting ejected from the game. That was far less about his at bat and that strike being called as it was for his pitchers mm -hmm. trying to get the expanded strike zone for a guy like Tom Glenn. Brown trying to punt his way on. Mulder threw him out. That ends the inning. After six in Port St. Lucie, a four pitch inning for Mulder, and he leads four to two. Changes for the Mets as we go to the seventh inning. Jose Valentin is the left fielder taking over for Cliff Floyd. And Chris Woodward has come in to play third base. David Wright will have the rest of the day off. Cardinals leading four to two, batting in the seventh. They trailed two to nothing after an inning, but this man got them even and then put them ahead. A two-run homer by Albert Pujols in the third, tied the game, and then he had a solo home run in his next at bat. In the fifth. And homered off Zambrano. Last time up, and there's his third home run of the day. That might be the deepest one yet. Way over the fence and straight away left field. Three straight homers for Pujols. The two-run shot, then back-to-back -back solo homers. The two-run blast against Martinez. The last two against Zambrano. He's three for four with three homers, three runs scored, and four runs batted in. It just feels like he's up every inning because every time he hits, it's something memorable and remarkable. And every home run's gone a little bit further than the one mm. before, too. David Eckstein's kind of chuckling in the dugout saying, man, that guy's phenomenal right there. Edmonds lifts one to deep left center. Beltron on the move. He can't get it. It's over the fence on a hop. Edmonds has his first hit of the day. Back-to-back -back extra base hits to open the inning. Well, Pujols found himself 1-0 again. He's same as the last time. 1-0 count. Got another fastball down in the wheelhouse right there. And just that's right in his power stroke. And you see it from the side here. I mean, he just hits against that front leg. And all the power goes up against it and drives it out of the park. And that thing is... I think it dented the back uh, back batter's eye on the field on the minor league fields back in the complex there. Here's Scott Rowland. Cardinals leading now five to two. So Taguchi has come on to run for Edmonds. Edmonds had sat out. The last three games with a heel injury. And they 
played. He'd been red hot. Edmonds had a hit in eight of his previous nine at bats entering today. He started out 0 for 3 today before that double. Rollins 2 for 3, two singles against Martinez. He struck out against Zambrano in the fifth, out of play and right. Well, for the Mets, when they're watching Victor Zambrano here, now he's pitching the second game of the regular season, starting that game for them. What, you know, he's been in a pattern. He misses with the first pitch fastball to get ball one, and then he comes back in with a fastball. And Cardinals hitters are just sitting on the fastball waiting for that pitch. When he has thrown a change up or something off speed, they've gotten swings and misses, but they're just sitting on his fastball. And Roland did not get the fastball. Took strike two, one and two. Up the middle, base hit out of the reach of Anderson Hernandez. Taguchi around to score. RBI single, third hit of the day for Scott Rowland. Three straight hits in the inning for St. Louis, and they lead 6-2. to two. Well, as much as Tony La Russa was probably disappointed about John Rodriguez's injury in the outfield, he has to feel pretty good about Pujols and Rowland. Rowland's third hit of the day, RBI there. In fact, they actually started a runner out of the dugout to pinch run for him, and he waved him back in. He wants to get some experience and some time on the bases to get himself ready for the season. Skip Schumacher came into the ball game early on when Rodriguez left after injuring his shoulder. And he stumbled and fell into the sidewall in left field. That's driven to deep left center. That'll be over Beltron's head again. Off the wall on a hop. Roland being waved around, and he will score. Only well, wanted to get some running in. He scores all the way from first on a double by Schumacher. Now, Scott Rowland is one of the better base runners in the game. And for Schumacher, again, he came in to replace John Rodriguez in the outfield there. And Gets a ball out over the plate again. Another 1-0 count, uh, and it gets a fastball that he can hit. Round second, he says, "You know, I twisted my ankle, but ah, there's no way they're taking me out of this game because I'm trying to make this team." You Noah know, Scott Rowland, having missed a lot of the season, most of the season last year. But having had a long career, you think, well, he should be okay. Just get back in it. But for players and for managers, you want the player to re-experience everything in the game again. You want him to re-experience running the bases. You want him to re-experience going to his right and going to his left, making a diving play, catching a pop-up. If he's going to make mistakes, get it out of the way in spring training so that he's back into form and get some rhythm to his game. And I think that's part of why Roland wanted to stay in and run the bases, just to experience it again. So that if he is called upon to score on first and a double, and he he we saw him run those bases, he ran a third base, perfect cut of the corner, direct line to home plate, excellent job of base running. He's always been known for it, and he's back into form. Yeah, the air Molina takes ball too low. Rick Peterson, the pitching coach, went to the mound. It's been a rough outing for Zimbrano, particularly here in the seventh inning. Given up four runs now in two plus innings on seven hits, including two home runs. He misses up and in three and all. Now for the Mets starting pitching, you start to think about Alzheimer Brown will get knocked around today. Pedro wasn't really Pedro today. Steve Traxel got knocked around his last time around, and it's not really the feel you want to have as you get ready to break camp. Ball four low. Five straight men have reached to open the inning. The good news is that's the first walk given up by Zimbrano. Get ready, fans. Opening day is coming. Tune in to ESPN on April 3rd to catch all the action. If I were a Mets fan, I think that would be the thing that concerns me. If Pedro fighting the toe injury, always a little bit fragile, particularly at this stage in his career. Aaron Miles pulled it to second. Safe at first. Miles beats it. Molina forced out at second. And on the third, Schumacher 
with one out. Now for Miles, once again, trying to make the team. He scores a point with Tony La Russa because he hits the ground ball, but he hustles down the line and beats out the double play. Hernandez right there, a little soft on the flip. That's a ground ball that has to be turned. And I think for Hernandez, he's going to have to get beyond the ball on the first base side and get some momentum back moving to second base on the flip. That's a double play that you have to turn in the big leagues. Mark Mulder is swinging a miss. We were talking about, you know, Zambrano's kind of an up and down guy anyway. Pedro coming back from the toe injury. Glavin's 40 years old. Traxel's coming back from injury. And your fifth starter, Bannister, is a rookie. If there seemed to be an obvious point of concern for the Mets heading into the season, that starting rotation would be it. Well, there's no question, and it's the depth to protect it as well. They traded Chris Benson in the offseason to the Orioles to get Jorge Julio, the reliever. They traded Jay So to the Dodgers to bring Dwan Don 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 Sanchez here as well. And they really have left themselves unprotected in that rotation if they are exposed to any injuries. That's why a Darren Oliver or Jose Lima or even an Aaron Heilman pitching in the pen may ultimately get called on later to be one of the starters. Two outs runners at the corners. And Hector Luna is up there hitting for David Eckstein. He was part of the mix for a while at second base. And perhaps still in position to make it as an extra man. Hold down the line. That'll help his cause. Fair ball. Schumacher on to score. Miles being waved around third, and he will score. 9-2 St. Louis, a two-run pinch hit double for Hector Luna. Well, Hector Luna needed that, and, uh, you know, the second base position was open for competition with the Cardinals. And you find out something about guys when they're in the midst of competition. Luna had been a, a utility man for the last few years. As you see, the training staff and Willie Randolph going out to check on Zambrano right now. And we talked about that starting pitching depth being a question and he's walking off and apparently he's injured because there wasn't anybody warming up for an ineffective outing and perhaps it ends with injury there's his pitch there and he kind of hobbles off the mound almost like he might have strained a groin or a hip flexor or something and not a good sign is for the guy who's supposed to start game two of the regular season. There's pitching change, and we'll come back to Port St. Lucie right after this. Cardinals have broken this one open with five runs here in the seventh inning. They're still batting. We remind you that our coverage of Major League Baseball's opening night built by the Home Depot comes your way on ESPN2 Sunday night at 8 Eastern time. The Cleveland Indians take on the Chicago White Sox. Available in high definition on ESPN2 HD for the first pitch. Join Baseball Tonight presented by Chevrolet. That's at 7 Eastern time on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Grady Sizemore's picture that he was recently given, a six-year contract worth about $24 million. That's a nice deal for a young guy who's a ways away yet from arbitration and free agency. Now Mark Shapiro doing what John Hart, his predecessor, did and locking up the young guys for the long term and he worked back then and so far it's working again in Cleveland. Things are going well there. Here's Pedro Feliciano who, as you see, pitched last year in Japan, was in the Mets organization before he went over to Japan for one year. He has come back and looks like he will be a left-hander in their bullpen on opening day. It does look like that. We acquired him when I was general manager there from the Cincinnati Reds, and he's bounced around a little bit. I always thought he could get the job done. Big, slurvy, breaking ball, can command a fastball, pretty good changeup as well. Pitched in Japan, and the story was that if he didn't land a job here, there was probably a job in Japan waiting for him again to go back over and make a little bit more money there than he could pitching in the minor leagues here in the States. Facing the ninth St. Louis hitter of the inning, Juan Encarnacion. It was 0 for 4 today. Well, that is one of the questions for the Mets bullpen with Feliciano maybe being the lone left-hander out there. The other reason Aaron Heilman fit there was he has 
a great changeup and a split to get left-handers out. So it's not always a left-handed pitcher that has to get the left-handed hitter out. Sometimes the righties can do it, and Heilman can do that. Lift into left. The catch made by Valentin, and that ends the inning. But the Cardinals get five. It started on a home run by Pujols. He's hit three today. St. Louis leads nine to two. Nine to two. St. Louis has the lead. Seventh inning stretch here at Tradition Field in Port St. Lucie. Six strong innings from Mark Mulder. He threw 76 pitches. One tall guy leaves to make room for another. Mulder 6'6. Six, six. Here's six foot seven inch Adam Wainwright. Now acquired from the Atlanta Braves in a trade a couple years ago. Made his way into the staff, was vying for the fifth starter role. And when they uh, gave it to Sidney Ponson, and they told Wainwright right away, you're going to the bullpen, kid. In the two games last year for St. Louis, but as you saw, I spent most of the year at AAA Memphis. They led the Pacific Coast League in innings pitched with 182. He was second in that league in strikeouts. Quickly ahead of the hitter, one and two. The count on Anderson Hernandez. Wainwright's 24 years old from Brunswick, Georgia. Hernandez thrown out by Aaron Miles. So the Cardinals are going to have to figure their bullpen out a little bit this year. They lost Julian Tavares to free agency, traded Ray King, left-hander, to the Colorado Rockies in the deal that brought Big B and Aaron Miles here. And they're going with a little less experience there and trying to piece it together. So Taguchi stays in the game in center field. Hector Luna had a pinch hit and is now the shortstop. Victor Diaz, the batter. Scott Spezio, the veteran, in to play third base. Check swing. Wayne right off the mound quickly. Nicely done. Sometimes those tall pitchers have a tough time on plays like that, but he showed excellent athleticism and pouncing on that one and getting ready to throw Diaz out. He really did bounce off the mound quickly there. And for a relief pitcher, you need to be able to field your position. Any pitcher in the National League, but particularly in the pen, if you're going to come in, runners on base where they may try to bunt and do some things, he showed he can handle it. He's a former first-round pick of the Atlanta Braves, 29th player taken in the June 2000 draft. Pitching to Jose Reyes, who's gone all the way at shortstop four in New York and has had a perfect day offensively. He doubled and scored in the first, walked and was picked off in the second, had an infield hit in the fifth. Mulder gave up eight hits in his six innings, but five of those hits were in the first inning. Gave up just the two runs. He walked two and struck out three, threw a wild pitch, and threw 76 pitches. Hey, Maggie, three. You know, the Mets closer from last year, Braden Looper, now in, in a setup role here with the Cardinals, has struggled some this spring. I think that makes Wainwright's performance that much more critical for this team as they're going to graduate him into more in, important roles. And, you know, Dave Duncan, Tony La Russa, they know how to manage young players, working them into the right situations to where they can be successful. Full count now. Wainwright works quickly and delivers ball four. The Mets have had base runners in every inning except the fourth. They've managed to score in only the first inning. Joe Hippus, the batter, struck out and is only at bat in the fifth inning. Breaking ball by Wainwright. A good looking breaking ball right there. He's throwing a lot of those high fastballs and then you start that breaking pitch right at that same spot at the hitter's line of view and break that ball down in the zone. Good pitch. Right. 
Hippus is a bright guy. He went to Northwestern, graduated from Northwestern. After he graduated from high school in Appleton, Wisconsin, Appleton North with a perfect 4.0 GPA when wow. you were uh, drafting him. He must have appreciated the fact he's a sharp fella. Like those smart guys. Absolutely. You know, with ball players, and it's interesting because Joe McElvain, one of the former general managers for the Mets here today, and he always talked about players. The best players have intelligence and instincts. You need to have one or two, one of the two for sure to be successful. Pippis strikes out for the second time. Little contact helps too. <laughs> End of the inning, still nine to two. Sean McDonough with Steve Phillips and Duke Castiglione back in Port St. Lucie, Florida, where the Cardinals lead the Mets nine to two. Friends, you can watch your team's out-of-market games live from anywhere, live Major League Baseball, right to your desktop. Go to ESPN.com and search MLB.tv. Sign up today. A nice hand for Albert Pujols, who has homered in each of his last three at-bats. Popping out his first time up, a two-run homer and a pair of solo homers. And is facing Pedro Feliciano for the first time today. He looked at strike one. Well, Joe Hippis just gave the signs and shifted inside. I'm thinking, I'm not sure I'd come back inside on Albert Pujols this at bat. I might work away off the plate a little bit. And he moves away that time. Feliciano missed outside. We're back in with a fastball here. Thought you said he was a smart Northwestern <laughs> guy. Actually, I think you said that. Who <laughs> <laughs> holds to left, and the catch made by Jose Valentin in foul territory. So Pujols denied in his bid to hit a home run in his fourth consecutive at bat, and here's Duke. All right, thank you very much, Sean, with Carlos Beltran here. Carlos, Monday starts a new season, your second year in New York. How do you think year two will be different for you? Well, to me, it's going to be different because I feel more comfortable, more relaxed. Uh, we had a uh, few more players in the in the lineup, and uh, you know, I don't feel like I have all the weight on me. And uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, I'm healthy. Uh, really looking forward to this 2006 season and try to do everything I can to help the team win. I know Ricky Henderson was here last week, and he spent a lot of time with Jose Reyes. But you also got to spend some time with him. What did you learn from Ricky? Well, Ricky is one of those guys who has a lot of knowledge about the, the game of baseball. Not only the game of baseball, he's one of the best Steelers in the game. And, you know, he really teaches how he did things in the game. And uh, and at the same time, that's good to know. Uh, good, uh, good to spend time with him because, uh, you know, he, he says few things that you can add to your games and you can be a better player. You were away at the WBC uh, with uh, Team Puerto Rico. How did that affect your overall spring? Don't really affect me. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I was benefited by going there because uh, I got... I play a lot, uh, have a lot of bat almost every day. I was having four at bats, the intensity of the game. So it was a great time. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to more events like, like the WBC. Carlos, thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank you. you. Sean? Sure. Well, that seems to be a unanimous opinion. Anybody you talked to participated in the WBC. Seems to think it was a terrific event. We're looking forward to the next time. So Taguchi lifts one to the left. Valentin again. Two outs. Now, Carlos Beltran is so critical to the Mets' success this year. Like a lot of players that go to New York for the first time, I think he was a little bit overwhelmed to try to live up to expectations. When you make $119 million, you're not only expected to perform as a player, but you're also supposed to be the face and voice of the organization. That's just not him. And I think that when now he's protected by Delgado in the lineup, he's also protected by Delgado's personality with the media in New York. I think he can just be a player this year and not have to worry about trying to please everybody. And he also talked about the health. I mean, the health's a factor. He had a quad injury last year, then the obvious terrible collision with Mike Cameron in the outfield. Now that he's healthy, they're looking for big things. Scott Spezio, the batter. 33-year-old veteran signed by St. Louis is a minor league free agent in February. Spent last year in Seattle's organization. And most of the year on the disabled list had back problems and an oblique strain. Line. 
behind and caught by the shortstop Corey Ragsdale. A one, two, three inning, the first for a Mets pitcher today. And welcome back to Port St. Lucie. The Cardinals leading the Mets nine to two. Josh Hancock on the mound for the Cardinals coming in. One of those guys vying for the last pitching spot on the team. Released from the Cincinnati Reds this spring. Came into camp a little overweight. New general manager Wayne Krifsky came in and said, you know what? I've got to set a tone here and send a message to people that uh, I'm serious about performance and getting the job done. So they released Hancock out of camp and he quickly signed with the Cardinals and now fighting for a job on their team. No new battery, Gary Bennett. Be their backup catchers taking over for Molina. Andy Chavez, the batter, he came in, in the last half inning for Beltron. And he looked at ball one. Leo Franco on deck. Fastball for a strike. Adam Wainwright was impressive in his one inning. He walked one, struck out one. He did look good, though. He had good life to his stuff. Good breaking ball. And I think if he it gets more comfortable, he'll mix in some breaking pitches earlier in some of the at-bats. Chopped up the middle. Nice play by Aaron Miles. We've said that a number of times today. Uh, you know, for, for guys that are playing for spots on the team, you can't say it enough, it's about performance. For Pedro Martinez, it's about getting your work in. That's why teams like the Florida Marlins, are they're leading all of spring training in wins and losses this year. They're like 19 and six so far this season. Where you have the White Sox that are, you know, they're seven and 18 so far during spring training. Young players play to make teams, therefore they have to perform. It's about getting hits. It's about, you know, getting people out. For the veteran teams that have guys who are going to make the club, it's about just getting your work in and getting ready to start the season. Leo Franco. Down the right field line. That's a fair ball and in for a hit. And Carnacion gets it back in, holding Franco to a single. You're right. I mean, the teams have some of the worst records in spring training right now are the White Sox, 8 and 19. The other World Series team from last year, Houston, 10 and 18. Boston Red Sox are 9 and 18. Well, those teams, most of the spots have long since been decided. It's just a matter of, you say, getting the work in. Well, the teams that are leading are the Cleveland Indians, a real young team, but a good young team at 20 and 10. But you have the Cincinnati Reds and the Marlins kind of leading everybody else. And again, it's they're trying to make the club, so it's about getting hits and showing the manager what you can do. Chris Woodward pops it up in shallow center for Taguchi. Two outs here in the eighth. The Cardinals leading nine to two. Cardinals 14 wins, 13 losses, and a tie this spring. The Mets 15, 13, and one. Seen a lot of each other, and they'll see each other again tomorrow as each team closes out spring training. About a half hour down the road in Jupiter. Jose Valentin, the batter. And I will say, though, that when we talk about winning and losing in spring training, the last week, Managers want to start winning games. They want their guys to start to get into the rhythm to where they're playing the game to win the games and, and get themselves, get some momentum headed into the season. But it's not just about getting in shape, and you're in that time frame right now. Valentin, another veteran, 36 years old from Puerto Rico, last year with the Dodgers. Got into 56 games. Of course, before that, a long stint with the White Sox. And prior to that, with the Milwaukee Brewers. And he's been an infielder his entire career and 
and that's her mixing him into the outfield as well. They talked about only going with four other outfielders and needing Woodward and Valentin to get some playing time out there, so he's getting some time in left field now. And, but for Willie Randolph, he's the left-handed bat off the bench when you need a home run. Jose Valentin's the guy he's going to send to the plate. Swing and a miss and a pitch down and in. A strong inning for Hancock. After eight, nine to two, St. Louis. Well, they love the ESPN here in Port St. Lucie. We appreciate the affection. Nine to two, St. Louis leading as we go to the nine. So Pedro Feliciano on the mound. The report from the Mets clubhouse on Victor Zambrano is that he left with a slight strain of his right hamstring. It is not believed to be serious, which is good news given he's scheduled to start game two of the regular season for well, New York. It may not be serious, but I think it, it has to beg the question, will he be able to start or not? I mean, when, when pitchers have toe problems like Pedro, or leg problems like Zambrano, and you pitch them, you expose them to arm problems. The legs are the foundation of the delivery. A lot of risk there sending a guy out with some leg issues. Skip Schumacher, the battery, double to knock in a run and scored in the five run seven. One for four. And then he took ball one from Feliciano's. Retired all four. Batters he has faced all on balls hit in the air on the left side of the field. One ball, one strike. Well, for Feliciano, as a left-handed reliever, you have to get the lefties out. But to show that he can get right-handers out as well means he's going to log more innings and not exclusively be a situational left-handed pitcher. That's the Mets this year will be celebrating the 20th anniversary of their 1986 World Series championship team. A lot of us New Englanders have had therapy to forget about that. <laughs> You're still hanging on to that one, huh? Yeah. Schumacher strikes out. On Monday, on opening day, the ceremonial first pitch will involve the last two men to touch the ball in that postseason, Jesse Orozco and Gary Carter. I'm going to make sure I'm away from my TV set. <laughs> I'm sure Carter uh, will jump up in the air, and Orozco will hurl his glove up mm. into the air and jump up and down to reenact the 86 series. Orozco struck out Marty Barrett to win game seven. You are holding on to that one, aren't you? Yeah. You going to be all right? I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue <laughs> the inning. I'm about putting my head down on the desk and having a good cry. <laughs> Derry Bennett up there with a count of one and one. Do you think this is the year somebody finally topples Atlanta in the National League East? Well, I tell you, I, I really think the Mets have a chance to be that team this year. I think it boils down to Pedro Martinez's health, though. If they keep him healthy and he can make 30 starts, I think that, that the Mets are going to supplant the Braves this year and win the division. The Braves have a lot of questions coming into the season. The closer role is a big question. A lot of young players unprotected this year. And a lot of expectations there. So I think this is going to be the year. And I've been wrong 14 consecutive years, so I'm not sure I'd go lay any money down on my opinion here. But but I, I just, you know, the Mets really have addressed their major problems. First base was a problem. They addressed it with impact in Delgado. Closer was a problem. They get Billy Wagner. Yeah, that to Pedro Martinez and Carlos Beltran with the young kids there. I think the, the nucleus is in place now for the Mets to, to start to make a run within this division. And obviously the Florida Marlins maneuvered themselves out of contention. You can forget about them. And the questions would be, are Philadelphia and Washington good enough to contend? Well, the Phillies pushed Atlanta last year, but I just don't see enough pitching on that staff. They're going to they're score some runs, but do they have enough pitching? I think they're going to come up short there. And the Washington Nationals, I think, you know, that ballpark, I don't think they have enough pitching or offense to really sustain it for a long period of time. So I think it ultimately becomes a two-team race. I do think the Braves make the wild card. I'm hedging my bet a little bit there on, on that one. But I, I think the Mets uh, will supplant them this year. Well, last year, every team in the National League East was 500 or better. 
Nationals in the basement at 81 and 81. Aaron Miles, the hitter, he's gone all the way at second base. Walked, had a single, scored a run. Played good defense, too. We're going to talk about Atlanta not having Leo Mazzoni. I think that's going to have a pretty significant impact. I think Roger McDowell, former Met and part of the 86 team, will be a pretty good pitching coach. It's just it's going to take a little time. Down the line. Base hit. Miles digging for two, and he'll get there. As Valentin had a little difficulty picking it up, probably didn't matter. Well, Tony La Russa said that second base job is up for grabs, and Miles is still a part of it. He might have written his own name into that opening day lineup card with this performance. Well, I think so. I mean, you know, he's played solid defensively. He's shown some speed on the bases, good base running, and a switch hitter hitting from both sides today. So I'd be very surprised as he's logged more playing time here at the end of spring training if he's not in the lineup on opening day. And here's the man most thought would be their second baseman when spring training began, Junior Spivey. He's had a very tough go of it this spring. Is it 138? Made four errors in 22 games. He's up as a pinch hitter. 31-year-old veteran. Signed by St. Louis as a free agent. In the offseason, divided his time last year between Milwaukee and Washington. He was traded by the Brewers to the Nationals in June last year for right-handed pitcher Tomo Oka. Talking with longtime Cardinal broadcaster Mike Shannon before the game, said the consensus around the Cardinals seems to be spivey in this new environment might just be pressing, trying a little too hard to make a quick positive impression. Well, but you know, there's going to be pressure at any point. It's all about performance, and, and you're going to press during the regular season as well. Spivey burst onto the scene with the Diamondbacks, really swinging the bat, wasn't a solid defensive player. Really, offense has tailed off each of the last several years. Nubs it down the first baseline. Feliciano elected to pick it up. His throw to first was off the bag. Then Franco dropped the ball, but Miles, who had rounded third, did not try to score. And they let that roll. It was going to go foul. It was spinning toward foul territory, but Feliciano thought he had a play. The angle was tough with the runner in the way as Feliciano tried to make the throw. Well, the angle's the problem here. I mean, he may have had time to be able to get him, but because the runner's running down the baseline and he moved into the baseline to make the throw, he didn't have an angle to be able to deliver the ball for Franco to handle him. So to let it roll foul, and a veteran catcher back there would have yelled and barked at him to let it go. How about a smart catcher? Maybe not a veteran, but this guy is a 4-0 student in high school, went to Northwestern, one of the great academic institutions in the country. You know, sometimes even smart guys hold their breath when they play sometimes and don't think like they should. And, but a young guy getting a chance in a big league game and big league spring training camp, and sometimes you lose your mind a little bit. I guess they charged the pass ball as well. They gave Spivey a hit. So now that Spivey got a hit, even though it was about a 15-footer, well, maybe we're going to say, don't write Miles in just yet. Could come right down till tomorrow when these two teams close out spring training in Jupiter. Uh, knowing Tony La Russa, he will leave it hanging yes. till that point just to squeeze the most performance he can out of everybody. And listen, for, for players like Spivey and Miles, every day is a test, every day is an evaluation. It doesn't matter that it's a 9-2 game. It doesn't matter in the least. For Wainwright, it's a test. There are scouts in the stands, your manager's watching. You're playing for the next opportunity. You're playing to keep your job and keep it away from somebody else. One of the treats for me of spring training when you talk about the Cardinals is seeing who's going to come visit Tony La Russa. There's a lot of... He is a popular guy. Celebrity, legendary friends. Bill Parcells, a fixture over the years. Bobby Knight's Bobby a big guy. Bobby Knight. Bill Belichick appeared this spring. Ron Wolf, Dick Vermeil. Tony La Russa's become very good friends with Tom Crean, the basketball coach at Marquette. Have you been down there at all? With uh, Tony sitting during the game? No. No, I haven't made it either. Why would he want us around? Right, we could have those guys <laughs> sitting there. Three one is chopped down to third. Nice play on a tricky hop by Chris Woodward. 
and that ends the inning. Cardinals strand two, but they take a nine to two lead to the bottom of the ninth. Sean McDonough, Phillips, Duke Castiglione back in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Nine to two Cardinals. Folks here still having a great time, enjoying a beautiful day. Last half inning of baseball they'll see in this ballpark for this spring. And it'll be pitched by the veteran Alan Bennis, who's trying to secure a spot on their pitching staff, and he's had a terrific spring. He's appeared in eight games, pitched ten innings, and given up only one earned run. Now the veteran right-hander battling for one of those last spots in the pen, and regardless of the score, he's under evaluation today as they try to make their final roster decisions. Come back from shoulder problems. Chris Basak, the batter. And one strike on Basak. Basak's at 211 this spring. Four for 19. Swing and a miss. Bennis, the fourth pitcher of the day for St. Louis. Mulder, Wainwright, Hancock, and now Bennis. Alan Bennis had shoulder surgery following the 2004 season and got into just 15 games last year in Double A Springfield. Slapped out of play to the right. Basak spent last year at Triple A Norfolk at 272. Got out of the University of Illinois. If he gets a hit, I drafted him as well. <laughs> in the sixth round in the year 2000. If he doesn't get a hit. I knew those scouts were full of baloney. Omar Benaya recommended him to me, I think. <laughs> Close, but a ball. And the Mets trying to scratch and claw their way back into this one. Down by seven in the bottom of the ninth. Anderson Hernandez to hit next. And he's gone all the way at second base for New York and is 0 for 3. Now for Anderson Hernandez, it doesn't matter the 0 for 3, 0 for 4. It's about giving quality at bats and learning at the major league level right now. And every at bat's an opportunity to improve yourself and gain some experience for the next time up. Foul ball. He got brief major league experience last year. Came up in mid-September from AAA Norfolk. Got 18 at bats and had one hit, a single against Colorado. Off Aaron Cook. Well, really, Willie really Randolph's really taken in right from the start. He talked a lot about Anderson Hernandez, more so than even Matt Kaz Matsui or Jeff Keppinger. Mm. Hit by the pitch. And didn't you get the feeling we've talked about a lot of speculation around this Mets campus, but even when Matsui comes back, it's possible Hernandez will keep that job. And when we spoke with Willie Randolph in the fourth inning, he seemed to be speaking that way as well. Yeah, they're, 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 nobody's coming out and saying it, but it seems pretty clear that this kid's going to really get an opportunity to fail. They're going to leave him in there until he can't get it done. And, you know, Matsui's making $8 million this year in the last year of his contract. And the question is, you know, he has struggled offensively, he struggled defensively, and if you bring him back in, do you play him considering the contract? Because what happens in New York when his name gets announced in the lineup, Matsui, people boo. Mm. And when you start the game every day at home with people booing you, it's not, it doesn't set you up feeling good about the season and about the day. So 
it's a real challenge as to what to do with that guy making the kind of money he is and, and really not having a place for him to play. Victor Diaz, the batter. Wouldn't your attitude, wouldn't you think the attitude of most GMs would be, all right, he's making $8 million, but if that's a mistake, don't compound the mistake by continuing to play him. Well, it's, it's, it is a challenge, though, because it's, it's one where there's always pressure about budgets, payrolls, uh, and see if you can't try to get something out of it. Maybe he's won it bad away from turning it around. He just needs opportunity. But at some point, it's only about winning games at the major league level, and you're right. At some point, you have to make that decision. But there are times where you run somebody out there hoping they'll get hot and you can get some return on your investment. Uh, for Omar Manaya, the general manager, because he didn't sign him, there's, I think, a little less accountability for what to do with Matsui. He might be able to cut the cord and, and, uh, and let uh, Hernandez play. Diaz strikes out, first out of the ninth inning. Mets have two men on, trailing 9-2. to two. Now I'm bringing up Corey Ragsdale. Came in to replace Reyes a couple of innings ago. Corey's not a tall guy for a shortstop, 6'4", out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Another one of your guys? He was a big basketball star out of high school. He signed a letter of intent to play basketball at the University of Arkansas. And Decided to pursue baseball instead. After you probably bowled him over with plenty of cash. Second oh, yeah. round pick out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. We did throw a little cash at the young man, yes. Mm -hmm. Good kid, though. Good hard worker. He's worked very hard to try to develop himself as a ball player. He died his time last year between A ball and double A Binghamton. Has some power at 19 home runs last year between single A and double A. Well, his defense was always ahead of his offense. You thought maybe the bat would come along, but he had pretty good hands. And the shadows could be an issue now as well, starting to creep out almost halfway between the plate and the mound. Well, Victor Diaz, it sure looked like he wasn't seeing the ball well. Those were, he had a couple of tough at-bats today and looked like a guy who thought he was going to get sent down the way he approached him. Two and two as Bennis pitches to Ragsdale. Well, most believe these Cardinals even with the changes are still the prohibitive favorite in the NL Central. Would you concur? I, I would. I think that they're not the same team that won 100 games the last two years. I think that they're, you know, the Sidney Ponson for Matt Morris swap in the rotation, I think they're a little less there. I think the bullpen is less, and they're going to have to prove that they're going to be able to get some big outs. Second base is a question mark. Mark Wadzlanek was so key to this team last year defensively. They turned more double plays than anybody in baseball. Ragsdale drives one to center. Taguchi won't get it. Two runs will score, and Ragsdale's into third with a triple. It's nine to four. Whatever you gave him, Steve, it wasn't enough. See, I think uh, we're going to have to renegotiate that. <laughs> Now, for these young guys uh, getting these kinds of opportunities in, in front of the major league coaching staff and the manager and the front office, it's just it's a chance for them to try to shine. And you know, we talked earlier about Hector Luna, the first, second base being open, and how he responded to that opportunity. For these kids, this is an opportunity. Some try too hard. Some are intimidated and a little bit scared. Some guys raise the level of their performance to be able to show they can handle this level of competition. Joe Hippus struck out twice and he's in the hole here. 0 oh 2.
As soon as we're finished here in Port St. Lucie, first and ten coming up next. Well, Alan Bennis laboring a little bit uh, this afternoon and a guy vying for a, a job. And you'd hate to think that one inning in spring training can ultimately make a decision. But a lot of times that's all that you have to go on. And, and uh, you know, spring training off time isn't the best time to evaluate player performance. Of course, the last outing is the last impression you're leaving on those decision makers as well. They had Jeff Nelson, the veteran, in their camp earlier in the spring. He actually pitched pretty well, but was released. He was surprised when he was released. They said they did it with about a week to go to give him a better chance to catch on with somebody else. Now, when you bring those veteran players into camp and giving them an opportunity to try to make your team from their perspective, when you let them go, you always made the wrong decision. If you let them go early, you know, you didn't give them enough of an opportunity. If you let them go late, you should have let them go earlier so they could try to hook on with another team. You know, you, you bring them in to give them a chance to try to make the club, but but in the end, the, the divorce at the end when you cut them loose is, is tends to be awkward. Wendy Chavez looks at a strike. He grounded out last inning and is only at bat of the game. Little number, Bennis is on it. And the throw to first is dropped by Pujols. Ragsdale scores, it's nine to five. And the Mets are still alive. Well, Bennis comes over to field the ball, and he's kind of falling and throwing at the same time and kind of short arms and rifles it. Pujols kind of sets up at first base a little bit too early there. And Bennis kind of a, threw it a little harder than he thought, but you see Pujols already set at the bag and unfortunately not able to handle the throw. They charge Bennis with an error. They don't hold the runner at first, so Chavez takes second base as Julio Franco looked at ball one. Now these Mets fans are into it. <laughs> they get closer and closer to getting that tying run in the on-deck circle. Let's go, Mets. Nine to five with a man on and two outs in the ninth. And a ball low, two and oh. Now Bennett goes to the mound. Well, Bennett will be the backup catcher to Yadier Molina. This year, veteran catcher, bounced around a little bit, but been a solid backup throughout his career. Trying to settle Bennett down. And this Mets fans hope to see one last rally here in Port St. Lucie before the team heads north, and hope is still alive. Franco a base hit in the center. And around comes Chavez. It's 9 to 6. And I will get the tying run of the on deck circle. Well, it's the last home spring training game here in Port St. Lucie. The fans trying to send them out uh, with some support. You know, it's interesting coming back down here, having been the general manager of the Mets and, and coming in. A lot of the same faces come down every spring training, support the team, and they'll be there on opening day at Shea Stadium as well. And the same people who used to stand by the fence and say, Steve, what was with that trade when you were coming <laughs> oh, in yeah. today? Steve, we love you. We miss you. Oh, You're yeah. doing a great job on TV. Yeah, they, they were the stalkers and death threats that I got. <laughs> yes, that's clear. <laughs> How quickly they have forgotten that uh, you know, that's, what, that's what's nice about it. a couple years later. Hey, how you doing? You're doing they, actually what they say is you do a great job at ESPN. Keep up the work that's and, right. and, and don't come back don't to ever come back. Again. <laughs> Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, went to the mound. Of course, the game should be over for Bennis, but the error extended the outing, the game. 
And now the Mets have the tying run in the on deck circle. They have Chris Woodward at the plate. There's a Valentin with home run power on deck. If they could get him up there. They've scored four in this inning. Down the line and foul. Oh and two. They count on Chris Woodward. Figures to be a utility infielder on this club. And solid year last year for him. Bounces around a lot of different positions. Solid defensively. Can play in the outfield too if you need him to. He started at six different positions last year. And he's hit by a pitch. That will get the tying run into the on deck circle. Well, he mentioned what a terrific spring Venice has had. We haven't exactly hit bullets all over the park here against them. But they've now batted around against them, and Jose Valentin could tie it with one swing. And Tony LaRusso is going to make a pitching change. And their closer, Jason Isringhausen, will come in to what is a situation that resembles a lot of what he'll see in the regular season. Well, they've had hope all the way to the end, these Mets fans. It began 9-2 as we went to the bottom of the ninth. Now it's 9-6, and Jason Isringhausen is in to try to save it. He had 39 saves a year ago in the regular season. Well, he's done a terrific job since joining the Cardinals and good free agent signing. They signed an extension last year as well. And very consistent closer. Strikeout stuff. A lot of questions in their bullpen getting to him. A lot of deletions from last year's bullpen. Tony LaRusso said before the game, we're still trying to put the pieces together, but we think we have good pieces. And strike one thrown to Jose Valentin. First and ten coming up next. Valentin, a tying run at the plate. Franco and Woodward aboard. And a ball and a strike now on Valentin, who struck out swinging. Last inning against Josh Hancock. Valentin, a fastball hitter, and Isringhausen, I'm sure, is going to try to pull the string and throw a breaking ball to him. In the air and right, not very deep, up into the breeze. Miles, the second baseman, has it. And the Cardinals prevail, ending a three-game spring training losing streak. Thanks for watching ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, Sean McDonough saying so long from Fort St. Lucie. The final score, the Cardinals 9 and the Mets 6. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Stay tuned now for First and 10 coming up next.